Is he going to throw for less than 4,000 or over 4,000? I am going to go again with over. He has a lot of weapons there in Indianapolis and probably the best offensive line in his whole entire career. So he is kind of a statue sitting there. Um, but, uh, oh, jab. I tune in all the time, jackass. Well, I appreciate that, Gail. Thank you. All right. So uh, over on 4,000 yards for my boy, Philip Rivers. Jacksonville Jaguars over under 949 and a half receiving yards for DJ Chark. Uh, they did bring in Laviscus Chenault Jr. as a wideout, so he's not just going to be the only one sitting there. Um, I think this is again attainable, but I'm going to go under. I'm going to need to see a little bit more out of the Shark Man before I give him 950 receiving yards. Lastly, the Tennessee Titans over under 1,199 and a half rushing yards for Derrick Henry. So is he going to hit 1,200? Is he not? Last year, I think he had 1,500 yards and a bunch of touchdowns. Um, Yeah, I'm going to give it over. Why not? He's a good rusher. Screw it. All right, let's get out of sports. Let's, uh, Let's review... A television program for you. One week it's a movie, another week it's a TV show. Um, But I give you a little something to watch. You know, baseball's boring. There's cardboard cutouts. The bubble in the NBA is actually fun. And the wild play tonight, I'll check out some hockey. But when you do just want to chill out, Netflix and chill, And I got the TV show for you. This one was actually recommended by Matt Benz, Benzie's Bit, co-host of Twist, the weekend sports talk. It's called Kingdom. So originally this was a direct TV show. Um, I didn't know they came out with shows, but now it's on the Netflix. So here's the storyline. Elvi and Lisa are struggling to keep their gym, Navy Street, afloat. Their best hope is Elvi's son, Nate, an up-and-coming fighter. Nate is also a... Uh, what the hell's that boy band with the three brothers? Somebody help me. The three brothers. The Jonas Brothers. Nobody help me. I actually figured that out on my own, so fuck off, everybody watching. All right, so Nate, an up-and-coming fighter. Jay, Elvie's other son, is on the outs with his father. When Lisa's ex and former MMA champ Ryan shows up, that complicates things. Nate has secrets of his own, which may hold him back. So the storyline doesn't really give it justice. It's pretty badass. You got this dad who was an MMA fighter. He was a badass, a champ. He's got two sons, both who were fighters. And then this dude, Ryan, gets out of prison. He was a stud in the MMA, and they all fight at LV's gym, Navy Street. You know, there's tits, there's drugs, and there's fighting. So it's a no-hold-bar show. And you really can't go wrong. It's three seasons. It's like a cheeseburger. Season one, 10. Season three, 10. With a double whopper in the middle. 20 episodes of season two. Benzie does tell me that it was supposed to be three seasons, which makes me happy. I don't like when uh, stuff gets cut short. Um, But 40 episodes. I am about halfway through season two. And I absolutely love it. So IMBD gave it an 8.4 out of 10. I think that's preposterous. My score is a 9.2 out of 10. So that's what we got for you on the TV show review. Random fact, how we end each and every show here on Mike on the Mic. Space smells like a seared steak. When you see footage of astronauts floating peacefully in space, do you ever wonder, what does space smell like? Well, according to some former astronauts, space does have a distinct odor, and that hangs around post-spacewalk. They've described it as a hot metal or searing steak. So, just in case you were wondering, uh, there you go. That's all the time I got for you this week. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to tune in to RTF Sports Network. We got a new lineup this coming up week. Twist, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, and down the line of that time slot. Mike on the mic on Tuesdays. 
Benzie's bid on Wednesdays. Twist again on Thursdays. GBG on Friday. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great week. Bet Saratoga from anywhere this summer with Naira Bets, the official betting partner of Saratoga Racecourse. Naira Bets players enjoy world-class HD live streaming covering races worldwide, instant replays, exclusive bonuses, and earn points on every bet. New customers that sign up today receive a bonus match on their first deposit up to $200 with promo code SPA. Join today at nyrabets.com and make sure to use promo code SPA to earn your sign-up bonus up to $200. In times of need, this is what most insurance sounds like. Thank you for holding. What's your policy number? But when you have coverage from AAA, you've got insurance with three A's. And that sounds like this. Thank you for calling AAA. Is everyone okay? So does your insurance sound like insurance? Or does it sound like insurance with AAA? A brand that's been helping members for over 100 years. Visit AAA.com slash insurance for a free quote on auto and home coverage. Hey there, everybody. It's Scott here. And his buddy, Mike. No, he's terrible. But we make up the duo that you guys might know as a Verbal Shenanigans podcast. We're a weekly podcast that does radio-style interviews with some really interesting guests. For instance, we've had amazing sports stars like Trent Dilfer, Lenny Dykstra, Dave Andrichuk, and Butterbean, to name a few. Now, we've also done things outside of sports, such as Mark Summers, Matt Penfield, uh, John Walsh, even William Hung. Yes. Uh, so please catch us every week on the RTF Sports Network from 9 to 10 a.m. See you there. Bye. In times of need, this is what most insurance sounds like. What's your policy number? But insurance with AAA sounds like this. Is everyone okay? See the difference at AAA.com slash insurance. Hello, sports fans, and welcome back to another podcast. In today's podcast, I will be talking about every NBA's best team put together in league history. Uh, it is made by Fox Sports, so I'll go through all 30 teams and give you guys my thoughts on it. So here we go. All right, so ranking at 30, they have the New Orleans Pelicans, and on their team they have Baron Davis, Eric Gordon, Ryan Anderson, David West and Anthony Davis and my thoughts on this is I fully agree on who's put on the team and quite frankly agree with the ranking on this team. Anthony Davis is the only eye catcher so that's that. Ranking at number 29 you have the Charlotte Hornets and they have Muggsy Bogues, Dale Curry, Anthony Mason, Larry Johnson, and Al Jefferson. I also agree with this ranking. People could argue that this could rank uh, a little bit higher, which I wouldn't count out, but compared to the next following teams, this is where they belong, I think. Ranking at number 28, they have the Brooklyn Nets, and on their team they have Jason Kidd, Kerry Kittles, Richard Jefferson, Buck Williams, and Brooke Lopez. And my thoughts on this is that if it were a real team and put together, they could make some noise and surprise many. I'm not saying a top team, but definitely Jason Kidd and his prime with Brooke Lopez and Richard Jefferson all in their prime. They would be, definitely be a team to watch, so that's that. At number 27, they have the Denver Nuggets, and they have Andre Miller, David Thompson, Alex English, David Issa, and Dikimbe Mutombo. Uh, this team ranking, in my opinion, could be lower, and I still would agree. Now, yes, this team has Mutombo on it, but against all of the teams, uh, one player can't carry the talent, and some would argue that Andre Miller and David Thompson are the talent, but in my opinion, I really don't see that. So yeah, hop into the next team. Ranking at number 26, they have the Toronto Raptors, and on their team they have Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, Vince Carter, Amir Johnson, Jonas Valanciunas, and my opinion on this is pretty easy. All in their prime, you tell me if you put Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, and Vince Carter all on the same cart, how does that not sound like greatness? Also, to add... Jonas Valanciunas, can't forget him, but the first three were stars on this team. I do believe uh, they could be a little higher on the list than 26, but that's my opinion. So on number 25, they rank the Los Angeles Clippers, and on their team they have Chris Paul, Ron Harper, Blake Griffin, Elton Brand, DeAndre Jordan. Again, this should be quick. 
Uh, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan obviously all played together, so there's that chemistry. Then you add a player like Ron Harper and Elton Brand. Yeah, you'd be crazy if you say that this team wouldn't be great. Again, like I've said, this team should be a little bit higher. Ranking at number 24, they have the Milwaukee Bucks, and on their team they have Cindy Moncrief, Ray Allen, Bob Dandridge, Glenn Robinson, and Andrew Bogut. And my thoughts on this are... Quickly to shorten up, comparing to the uh, teams above, this rating, in my opinion, is a little too high. But this team has potential, it just doesn't grab my eye uh, compared to the last. Uh, next up, they have the Washington Wizards. Uh, and on their team, they have John Wall, Gilbert Arenas, Antoine Jameson, Elvin Hayes, and Wes Unseld. Not much to say on this. Uh, I will say this, though, that is one crazy eye-peeling backcourt and John Wall and Gilbert Arenas. This team would have the potential, I think, to make a lot of noise if they were real so that's that at number 22 you have the minnesota timberwolves and on their team they have ricky rubio kevin martin kevin love kevin garnett and carl anthony towns uh so on this team if we're talking about all in their prime 100 percent i would say that this team could be a heavy sleeper on this list and definitely uh, if we're talking about all in their prime they deserve to be a little bit higher than a number 22 well, yeah, that's that. So at number 21, you have the Dallas Mavericks, and they have Derek Harper, Jason Terry, Michael Finley, Dirk Nowitzki, and Tyson Chandler. Uh, my thoughts on this are this Mavericks team could go either way really good and make some noise or just go straight to the dump. It's a hit or miss. Could be higher or could be lower on the list. So, so yeah, I'll just leave it at that. At uh, number 20, you have the Indiana Pacers, and on their team they have Mark Jackson, Reggie Miller, Paul George, Dale Davis, and Rick Smith. Uh, my thoughts on this are this Pacers team knows question asked. Gus doesn't deserve to be higher. They need to be higher. A prime Reggie Miller with a prime Paul George. Then they have Mark Jackson as point guard. Yeah, you're crazy if you disagree with that statement, me saying that they deserve a higher rank. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, at number 19, you have the Orlando Magic, and they have Penny Hardaway, Nick Anderson, Dennis Scott, Rashard Lewis, and Dwight Howard. And my thoughts on this are, I think this Magic team is about right where it belongs. Could you argue for a higher rank? Yeah, but just not sure comparing uh, to the other teams that, that it wins. Most definitely this team alone is a higher rank, just comparing to the rest, not very sure. So at number 18, you have the Portland Trailblazers. And on their other team, they have Damian Lillard, Clyde Drexler, Jerome Kersey, Rashid Wallace, and Bill Walton. Again, I'll state that this team is a hit or miss. More than likely, I'll say that they deserve to stay where they are or possibly go up a little bit higher, but this team could definitely make a lot of noise. And that's if they got the chemistry down, uh, but I'll, yeah, I'll keep it at that. So at number 17, you have the Phoenix Suns, and they have Steve Nash, Dan Marley, Sean Marion, Connie Hawkins, Amari Sonnemeyer. My thoughts on this, this team could be arguably higher. Don't see why or how you would degrade this team. All in their prime could be very interesting and fun to watch, but yeah, I'll leave it at that. So with the next team, at number uh, 16, you have the Atlanta Hawks, and they have Lenny Wilkins, Joe Johnson, Dominique Wilkins, Al Horford, and Bob Pettit. Uh, so my thoughts on this are, uh, in my opinion, this team, like others, is ranking just a little high. Not saying they're not good or couldn't be, but just again, comparing to the rest, don't see if they deserve this ranking. So yeah, that's that. Uh, number 15, you have the New York Knicks, and on their team they have Errol Monroe, John Starks, Carmelo Anthony, Charles Oakley, and Patrick Ewing. And my thoughts on this are, it's pretty obvious. You're telling me you put Carmelo Anthony, Charles Oakley, and Patrick Ewing all on the same court. Uh, you'd be a genius if you were able to put that together in person, because that team, in my opinion, would destroy others. So at number 14, they have the Cleveland Cavaliers, and on their team they have Kyrie Irving, Mark Price, Craig Ello, LeBron James, and Brad Daughtry. And my thoughts on this are, other than the obvious and having Kyrie and Kyrie Irving, I don't see much going on, but let's be real, LeBron James can't count out the legend out of anything when he's on the court, but yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, next, you have the Detroit Pistons, and they're number 13. Their team is as follows. Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dummers, Grant Hill, Dennis Rodman, and also Bill Lambeer. So my thoughts on this are the Pist this Pistons team could be a team to watch. Now I can't and won't say they will make a lot of noise, but I believe that they could have the potential to make some. So yeah, that's that. So at number 12, 
you have the Sacramento Kings, and they have Oscar Robinson, Mitch Richmond, uh, Peja Stoyakovich, Chris Webber, and DeMarcus Cousins. So this team, if you put this team in today's NBA, yes, I believe it could soar into the playoffs and make some noise with one of the greats, Oscar Robinsons, and then you add DeMarcus Cousins, and then the legend, Peja Stoyakovich. Definitely, I see this team doing great and definitely making... Uh, noise in the playoffs, if it were. So yeah, that's that on this team. At number 11, you have the Memphis Grizzlies, and on their team they have Mike Conley, Mike Miller, Sean Battier, Paul Gasol, and Mark Gasol. So to start off, you of course got Mike Conley, who was a great leader of the team before the obvious and current time he left the team for the Utah Jazz. But besides that, then NBA fans, you finally get the dynamic duo in the Gasol brothers that we've been waiting to see. So yeah, I think that this team could be very good. So yeah, um, next up, you got the Miami Heat at number 10, and their team is as follows. They have Tim Hardaway, Dwayne Wade, Glenn Rice, Chris Bosh, Alonzo Mourning. My thoughts on this are, so to quickly add, I'm surprised LeBron James wasn't added to this list. As obvious, the duo of James and Wade. But besides that, Tim Hardaway and Dwayne Wade, that would be one scary backcourt. Then you would have Chris Bosh at the power forward. All together, this team ranking is perfect, I think, and could only get better, not even worse. Uh, next, you have the Houston Rockets at number 9. And they have Kenny Smith, James Harden, Tracy McGrady, Robert Horry, and Hakeem Olajuwon. So this team is stacked from talent from one to five and honestly I see this team being a top three team at all time but I guess I could see where they are ranked where they are so yeah, I'll leave that at that uh, number eight you have the Utah Jazz and on their team they have John Stockton, Pete Marjevic, Andre Kilernia, uh Carl Malone and Mark Eaton to start off you already have a super dynamic duo in the backcourt and John Stockton and Pete Marjevic. Then you look a little farther and you see Carl Malone. I'd say this team has a great one, and I agree where they are placed. So next you have the Oklahoma City Thunder, and they have Gary Payton, Russell Rusbrook, Kevin Durant, uh, Sean Kemp, and Jack Silkma. So with this team, just to state the obvious, this is a star-studded lineup. I mean, you have two of the best players of this era to play the game, then you add two of the best players in the game in the 90s, put those four on the court. In my opinion, that's just a super team. So that's that. Uh, number six, you have the Philadelphia 76ers, and their team is Allen Iverson, Andre Iguodala, Julius Irving, Charles Barkley, and Moses Malone. My thoughts on this are to state right off the bat, I believe this team as a whole together is one of the best teams to play the game if they were all on the same court together. With that, I'll add you have the talent of every position. Then you have a player in Andre Iguodala who could uh, up the talent on the court and keep the chemistry up altogether this is my favorite team so far on the list at number five you have the golden state warriors and they have stephen curry clay thompson chris mullen draymond green and, and Wilt chamberlain this warriors team put together is quite interesting if you look right off the bat three out of the five players who played uh, with each other and curry thompson and green so there's that chemistry right there then you add the talent of chris mullen and the greatest to ever play the game, Wilt Chamberlain. I'll just say one thing and keep it at that. You'd be nuts if you get bet against this team. At number four, you have the Boston Celtics, and they have Bob Cosy, uh, Paul Pierce, Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Bill Russell. So my thoughts on this. Now, I know he played for a couple teams in his career, but I'll start off by saying I'm surprised to see Kevin Gar Garnett on this team. But besides that, this team... Then, and the three stars studded in Paul Pierce, Larry Bird, and Bill Russell. If that doesn't catch your eye, I don't know what will. And to add on, I'd say that this team is a safe bet to bet on for the finals if it were real. So that's that team. At number three, you have the Chicago Bulls. And they have Derrick Rose, Michael Jordan, and Scottie Pimpin, Tony Kukic, and Artis Gilmore. Uh, finally, someone who thinks the way I do, I've said for years, I wonder what Rose, Jordan, and Pimpin would look like. I'd honestly say that due to this talent of this team has singly accomplished, they deserve to be top three or some would even argue number one. So that's that. Next up, you have the final two. And so at number two, they have the San Antonio Spurs. And on their team, they have Tony Parker, 
Greg Gervin, Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan, and David Robinson. And the Spurs team put together already catches my eye by having Parker, Leonard, and Duncan, whom all played together. Then you add the stars George Gervin and David Robinson. Self-explanatory that this team would glide through competition if they were real. So finally, next up, you have number one, and that is the Los Angeles Lakers. And their team is as follows. They have Magic Johnson, Jerry West, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So my thoughts on this is this Lakers team in one word is wow. I mean, you have literally five Hall of Fame worthy players all in the same court who all played with at least one another. I have no argument with this ranking as they deserve to be on top of this list. So yeah, that wraps up uh, this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, My next podcast will be here in about three days. And that podcast will be about... uh, every uh, MLB's team standing so far as the season has just resumed. So yeah, I'd be expecting that. All right, see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Remember the best summer of your life spent eating Arby's pecan chicken salad sandwich? It's so fresh in your memory. You can still taste the sliced grapes, diced apples, slivered pecans, and roast chicken. You can still taste the better fresh lettuce on honey wheat bread. You can still taste every single bite. Because Arby's pecan chicken salad sandwich is back. Arby's, we have the meat. At participating Arby's for a limited time. You can only bake so many loaves of homemade sourdough. It's time to treat yourself and dine out again. You've earned it. And if you want to, make it a night out in the city. Indiana residents can save up to 50% off hotel stays. The city of Indianapolis is excited to welcome you back safely. Check out visitindy.com for more details on your favorite restaurant reopening plans. You can only sing karaoke to your dog so many times. It's your turn to see live music again. You've earned it. And if you want to, make it a night out in the city. Indiana residents can save up to 50% off hotel stays. The city of Indianapolis is excited to welcome you back safely. Check out visitindy.com for more details on your favorite music venue reopening plans. Hello, sports fans, and in this one today, uh, this is episode three, NFL free agency. Uh, I'll be going through every single team and talking about their additions in the 2020 season. Uh, I'll go through uh, all the big names, and I'll give my thoughts on that, but other than that, I'll just quickly run through every team and every player that they got. So to start off with the Arizona Cardinals, uh First, they got Devondre Campbell, linebacker. Uh, He used to play for the Atlanta Falcons, and they signed him on a one-year deal uh, worth up to $8.5 million. Uh, Next up, they got uh, Kenyon Drake. Uh, They just placed the franchise tag on him on March 21st. And then Larry Fitzgerald re-signed with the Cardinals on a one-year $11 million contract. Uh, next up, they got Marcus Gilbert. Uh, they re-signed him to a one-year $1.5 million contract worth up to $3.7 million incentives. And then with the biggest trade of this offseason, I would agree with would be uh, DeAndre Hopkins acquired in a trade along with the Texans. And the Texans got David Johnson in exchange in the trade and the 2020 second round pick and the 2021 fourth rounder. Uh, so this will be a really good pickup for the Arizona Cardinals and Kyler Murray. Uh, he has a new weapon behind him. And then, as I, I had already said, uh, the, they got their running back in Kenyon Drake. Next up, they got Devon Kennard. Uh, I believe he played in the Lions. Uh, they signed him to a three-year, $20 million contract. And then, lastly, for the team, they got Jordan Phillips, defensive tackle, and they signed on a three-year contract. Next up, you got the Atlanta Falcons, and starting off with them, they had gotten Dion Buchanan, agreed on terms with the deal with the Falcons, and he is coming from a rival in the uh, in their division, and that'll be the Buccaneers. And then next, they got Tyler Davidson, from the New Orleans Saints, he agreed on a three-year, $12 million deal that includes a $4 million guarantee. And next up, they got Dante Fowler Jr. Uh, he used to play on the Rams. He used to play on the Jaguars as well. Uh, he agreed to a three-year deal worth of $48 million with the Falcons. 
and arguably their biggest signing of the, this free agency, they got Todd Gurley. Uh, he agreed on a one-year, $6 million deal with the Falcons. He will receive a bonus of $7.5 million from the Rams, and there is a $2.5 million offset. In total, he will get $11 million to play in 2020. Uh, next up, they got Charles Harris. He acquired in a trade with the Dolphins in exchange for a 2021 seventh round draft pick and another really good pickup that I like that the Falcons got uh, they got Hayden Hurst tight end from the Ravens uh, he was acquired in a trade with an exchange of a 2020 second and fifth round pick so that'll be a really good pickup young player talented next up you got the Baltimore Ravens uh, biggest move that they made arguably would be Calais Campbell and they acquired him in a trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars in exchange for a fifth round pick and they're finalizing a two-year deal 27 million dollars uh, with that he can include a 20 million dollar guarantee so he'll be getting paid a lot uh, next up they got DJ Flucker uh, signed a one-year deal with the Ravens next up they got uh, Matt Judon uh, he's an edge rusher the team placed the franchise tag on him and then the team placed a uh, original round tender on the restricted free agent, Mascara. If any other team decides to sign a contract to him, Baltimore doesn't match, then the Ravens will not receive any compensation. So it's kind of a here you go type player that they're just sending out in free agency. Uh, and next up, they resigned Jimmy Smith to a one year deal, $6 million contract. Uh, and then after that, they got Jihad Ward agreed on a return on a one year deal. And then lastly for the team they got Derek Wolf. He agreed on a one year three point or three million dollar contract, fully guaranteed and up to six million dollars with the incentives. Next up you got the Buffalo Bills. So here's the details. So they added uh, uh Mario Addison, he agreed on a three year thirty million dollar contract that includes fifteen million dollars in guarantees. Uh, they added Vernon Butler signing a deal with the Bay or with the Bills on a two-year deal worth up to eighteen million dollars, uh, nine point three guaranteed. And the biggest move uh, with the team, they got Stefan Diggs acquired in trade with the Vikings, along with the twenty twenty seventh round draft pick in exchange for a twenty twenty first pick, fifth pick, sixth pick, and a twenty twenty one fourth pick. So in pick wise, they did give up a lot in my opinion, but. It's Stefan Diggs, so I mean, you have to do what you got to do to get a player like that. Next up, they uh, got EJ Gaines. He agreed on a one year deal with the team. Uh, they got Quentin Jefferson. He's expected to sign with the Bills on a two year deal. Uh, they also got Josh Norman. He agreed on a one year, $6 million contract with a value of $8 million in incentives. Uh, Quentin Spain, he re signed to a three year, $15 million contract. And lastly, they got Daryl Williams, offensive lineman, signing a one-year deal with the team. Next up, you got the Carolina Panthers, and here's the details. So they re-signed uh, Robbie Anderson to a two-year, $20 million contract. That includes $12 million in, in year one. And I believe the next is uh, just incentives for the $8 million remaining on the table. And then they also went out to go sign Eli Apple, who used to play for the Saints. He, he signed on a one-year, $3 million contract that includes $750 signing bonus. Uh, next up, they got uh, re-signed Trey Boston on a three-year, $18 million contract with $9.5 million in the first year. And then X, they got uh, Teddy Bridgewater from the New Orleans Saints as well. He signed a three-year, $63 million contract. And uh, next, they got Farrell Cooper. He's a wide receiver. He signed a one-year contract. And lastly, they added Seth Roberts, another wide receiver. He signed a one-year $3.75 million contract. And to add on, they uh, actually got PJ Walker, and he was in uh, really high talks on ESPN and everything because of the fact that he's coming from the XFL League. Uh, for those that don't know about that league, it was an NFL League, or not like an NFL League, but uh it's like a copycat, basically, like players that didn't make it in the NFL or players that were really good in college that couldn't make it to the NFL. They came to this league, and it was actually pretty cool. I liked it. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, one of the few people that are coming from that league. So we'll see what goes with that if anything happens to Teddy Bridgewater. Next up, you got the Chicago Bears. 
Uh, so to start off, they got uh, Artie Burns. He signed a one-year deal. Uh, Dion Bush, he re-signed on a one-year deal worth $1.4 million. And uh, they also got Nick Foles. He was acquired in the trade with Jacksonville Jaguars. And the trade was as follows. So it was in exchange for a fourth-round pick and a restructured contract with the Bears. He will pay... $8 million per year over the next three seasons with this or $6.5 million in available and incentives each year. But Foles can void the deal in 2021 and 2022 based on performance. So to quickly for these next two, uh, they both play for the Saints and that is Ted Ginn and Jimmy Graham. Ted Ginn, he signed a one-year deal with the Bears. There's no money situation uh, like on the news, so I don't know how much worth, but Jimmy Graham, he signed a two-year deal worth $16 million, and that contract will include $9, $9 million guaranteed and has no trade clause, so Jimmy Graham is pretty set in stone in Chicago for two years. Lastly, for the Bears, they got Robert Quinn, Edge. Uh, he agreed to a five-year, $70 million contract, and yeah, that'll be that for that team. For the next team, it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals, and this will be much be really quick as they didn't do too much on free agency as to this point so they got Mackenzie Alexander signing a one-year four four million dollar contract they signed Vaughn Bell which is also a New Orleans ex-New Orleans Saint and he agreed to a three-year 18 million dollars deal that will pay him seven million in, in year one and next they got well not got but they re-signed uh AJ Green, but they placed the franchise tag on him. Don't know why they would do that to that type of player in that franchise, but I'm not the general manager and thinks so I have no say in that. And lastly for the team, they agreed on a deal with uh, DJ Reader, he's a defensive tackle, and that is a four year, $53 million contract, fully guaranteed. Now to move on, the Cleveland Browns. So to start off, they signed a defensive tackle. Andrew Billings, he signed a one-year $3.5 million uh, fully guaranteed. They had also added Adrian Claiborne. He signed a two-year deal, $6 million, uh, and it'll be worth up to $7 million with incentives. Next, they got Jack Conklin. Uh, he agreed to terms on a three-year deal, $42 million, uh, with $30 million fully guaranteed, so m more than half his contract, which is really good for his situation. Uh, B.J. Goodson, linebacker, he agreed on a one-year deal. Austin Hooper, who used to play for the Falcons, he signed a four-year, $42 million contract with $20 million guaranteed in two years. Uh, the team also placed a second-round tender on the restricted free agent Kareem Hunt. And next, they got uh, Kevin Johnson. He signed a one-year, $3.5 million, and that is max value of six million dollars uh next up they got carl joseph signing the brown with the browns on a one-year deal and lastly for the team they got case keenum and his contract details are as follows it's a three-year 18 million dollar deal including 10 million guaranteed next up you got the dallas cowboys so to start off they got anthony brown cornerback signed a three-year deal worth 15.5 million dollars uh, next up, they got Ha Ha Clinton Dix uh, from the, I believe he played with the Bears this season. Uh, he used to be an X-Pactor, but anyways, they signed him to a one-year deal worth $4 million or $4 million with $2.5 million guaranteed. And then they re-signed Amari Cooper on a five-year deal, $100 million that includes $60 million guaranteed and $40 million at signing and another $20 million for injuries that becomes fully guaranteed on the fifth day of the 2020 league year. So they really went out, gave this guy all their money, so hopefully he performs as he should because of all that money. The team could easily trade him, which they'd be kind of dumb for doing. Next, they got a, a quarterback, which is very surprising due to the fact that they have a quarterback in Dak Prescott. The quarterback is Andy Dalton from the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, which is very surprising because of age and performance is a factor when it comes to him. So don't really see eye to eye with the Cowboys on this one. Uh, anyway, he signed a one-year deal worth up to $7 million. It includes $3 million guaranteed. Next, they got Cameron Irving. Offensive lineman signed a one-year deal with the team. 
Uh, they signed kicker Kai Forbath. Uh, terms not yet disclosed, so don't know too much about that. Uh, next, they signed Blake Jarwin, or he they re-signed Blake Jarwin to a three-year deal worth uh, $24 million with $9.25 million guaranteed. Uh, so in my opinion, they like really low-balled him with that. They're like, here, here's all this money, but wait, you only get like 2% of it. Uh, next up, they got a, or they re-signed Sean Lee, and they signed him on a one-year $4.5 million guaranteed. And then uh, lastly, they got uh, Gerald McCoy from the... Uh, Buccaneers and he agreed to terms on a deal with three years 18.3 million dollars guaranteed that can reach up to 20 million dollars with the incentives actually they got one more player in Don Terry Poe and the details for that contract is not yet disclosed and this is also the team that uh, surprisingly signed Alden Smith Edge uh, he agreed to a one-year deal two million dollars that could be up to worth to four million uh, he is currently suspended by the league, has applied for reinstatement though, and has passed through it, so he'll be good to go when it comes to game time. Next up, you got the Denver Broncos. So to start off, they got A.J. Bouye, and he was acquired in a trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars in exchange for a 2020 fourth round pick. Uh, so that'll be that. And then they also got uh, Jarrell Casey. He was acquired in a trade with the Tennessee Titans in exchange for a seventh round draft pick. Uh, so that's two trades for the team on the offseason. Uh, they also got Melvin Gordon. He agreed on terms with the Broncos on a two year $16 million deal and $13.5 million guaranteed. So he'll stay in the division with the Chargers and play him twice a year. So that'll actually be fun to watch. Uh, moving on, they got Shelby Harris, defensive tackle. He's re-signing with the Broncos on a one-year $3.25 million. Lastly, they signed tight end Nick Vanett. He signed on a two-year deal with the Broncos. The money is not disclosed yet, so can't get too much detail on that. Next up, you got the Detroit Lions. So to start off with the Detroit Lions, they went out and signed uh, Geronimo Allison to a one-year $910,000 or deal guaranteed. Uh, they signed Jamie Collins, a linebacker. He agreed on terms to a three-year, $30 million contract that includes $18 million fully guaranteed. Uh, they went out and signed Chase Daniel, quarterback. He agreed on a deal with the Lions. Uh, they went out and got Deron Harmon. He was acquired in a trade from the New England Patriots along with the 2027th round draft pick. And then they got in exchange for a 2020 fifth round draft pick and the player. So that'll be that. Uh, next, they got Jerron Kearse, safety. He signed a one-year, $2.7 uh, million dollar guarantee or deal guaranteed. Uh, they got Miles Kilbrew. Uh, he agreed on terms of the Lions. Money is not disclosed yet. Also, they had gotten Danny Shelton. He agreed on a two-year deal, 18 or no, $8 million guarantee. They went out and got... Or Are you tired of sports shows that ask the same old boring questions? You want to talk about Kareem Hunt? Then check out Strikeout Beer. They're not scared to ask those hard-hitting questions. Well, what the 65 Browns do w without music? Can I say balls? Did you poison me? <laughs> Does it slide on? Does it twist on? You don't know. <laughs> check out Strikeout Beer live Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, Spreaker, rtfsportsnetwork.com, and catch the replay anywhere you listen to your podcast. Do you want to get inside the mind of Matt Benz, co-host of Twist, the weekend sports talk? Well, tune in to Benzie's Bit to find out what he really thinks about sports and life on the one and only RTF Sports Network. What's going on, Triple Shot Sports family? This is Brandon Combs, host of the best podcast on the planet. That's the Triple Shot Sports podcast. Be sure to join myself and soup boss, Chad Lounder, live for two hours. Yes, I said two hours every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Central on the RTF Sports Network Facebook page and YouTube. And if you miss any part of the show, you can hear us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on your drive home at 5 p.m. Eastern on rtfsportsnetwork.com. 
You can only rearrange your living room furniture so many times. It's your turn for a staycation in Indy. You've earned it. And if you want to, make it a night out in the city. Indiana residents can save up to 50% off hotel stays. The city of Indianapolis is excited to welcome you back safely. Check out visitindy.com to shop hotel rates and book your getaway. What's up, Conroe? Welcome to a brand new edition of Nerd Thug Sports. Coming right at you at 104.5, 106.1, the sister station. And we're streaming worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. As always, feel free to check out uh, Facebook.com backslash Nerd Thug Radio. That's the mothership, and that's where all of that magic happens. All um, that magic. Sounds all like that a, magic. Does that sounds like a, yeah, I like it. Sounds like stuff. Disney. Doo, 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 doo. I don't know what that was. That was like our intro. Like elevator doors open noise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming at we're doing this still quarantine style so little brother nico in the bunker under the ocean mm-hmm. and um and me coming at you Corey dlg how you doing man i mean i'm still alive in my bunker uh, are you have you died of the plague yet um everyone's a zombie but we all seem kinder now we just travel together uh, really it was a bonding so... exercise have you have you watched any of the Greatest television show ever created by man, uh, Bojack. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the Midnight Gospel yet? But no, you said nice things. I need to watch. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah. I guess this is the next thing I'm going to check out. It's the Midnight Gospel. I might put that on the night while I'm working on stuff. It's real cool. Okay. All right. We'll have to I'll have to take a look at this here. The only reason I, I th- mean, you really mentioned that is because you're talking about zombies, and that's like the first episode. Oh, uh, okay. Is it like different things? Is it like the uh, robot love thing was? Kind of like it's it, it's literally podcasting, but like so like the the, the audio is from like a podcast, and there's like a, a running theme, and then the visuals have like a, a story that's like loosely connected to everything. Okay, and so like the topics are all over the place and really interesting stuff, and then the visuals are just kind of like fun, but. Like, pretty interesting and meaningful. I guess. I guess we'll need to we need to check this out. Then I'll check this out. Yeah. Um. So it's it's uh we're getting close to having live sports again. I know. Um, I, I just got an ad for the NBA restart. Oh man! Oh, it's happening. The 2019-2020 season ain't over yet. Coming back at you. Yeah, in like a week. Oh man, 2019, 20, how, how long ago was 2019? Seven so, months ago? So this season technically should have ended like... A million years ago. No, off the top of my head, I think the NBA playoffs can kind of creep into summer a little bit, like early May. So we should have been done like two months ago. Yeah, yeah. But uh, instead they canceled the season in February... Uh, they basically he looked at everything, and <laughs> this is what's kind of messed up. They're restarting the season, but they're only inviting 22 teams. There's 30 teams in the league. Look, sometimes you just got to accept that you're not going to make it. And I think that's what they did. I think the NBA basically told 18, they were like, you don't really, like, do you even, you know what this is? This is when your job doesn't like you, and you don't like your job, and it's like raining, and they're like, do you even want to work in the rain? And you're like, no. do you need me to come in? And they're like, well, we don't need you, but we're not going to say no. And you're like, well, I don't necessarily have to come in today. And they're like, e- you're probably right. Tell you what, if we need you, we'll call you. But the answer is probably no. <laughs> right. So the Knicks and seven other teams that suck are all at home. Um, darn. <laughs> where is I supposed? Where is the losers bracket? I need. Yeah, the Knicks are definitely champions of that bracket. Like, there's no doubt about that. Um, but so it's kind of interesting what they're doing. They've got eight games scheduled, and basically, these eight games are set up in such a way. 
I think it's the last – technically it's the last eight games on the schedule, I believe. And it's going to decide um, – no, it can't be because one of the rules um, – and I don't have it in front of me. Okay, here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not all the games. Here's the rule. If the number nine seed finishes within four games of the number eight seed, there will be a play-in tournament between nine and eight to decide who gets in. Hmm. I don't know what that means. So after these eight games, everyone's kept their record from before. Okay. So in the in the East right now, the Orlando Magic is eight seed at thirty and thirty five, and the Washington Wizards are twenty four and forty. Well, if the Wizards win five or six of their games and the Magic blow theirs, they'll finish close. And the reason it matters is because there were still technically games left in the season. So at 30-35, they've only played 65 games. So in an 82-game season, they're still technically short. You know, oh, uh, so, the, so, they, so they played it kind of, you know, make up that difference. Yeah, and so they're given the nine seed. They're given these close teams. So the, this is where it's funny. In the East, they only invited nine teams because the Wizards were kind of close. Mm-hmm. All right? In the West, they invited 13 teams. Right, because it's way more competitive. <laughs> so the eight seed in the West is 32 and 33. It's the Memphis Grizzlies. The Trailblazers, the Pelicans, the Kings, the Spurs, and the Suns are all within two games of each other. Mm-hmm. But there is kind of a gap. So the Grizzlies are 32 and 33. The Blazers are 30, 29 and 37. The Pelicans, Kings, and Spurs all have 36 losses. And the Suns have 39 losses. Basically, anyone from a nine seed down in the West can't lose. If they lose a game, they're out. Right. But if somehow, after these eight games, a nine seed finishes close enough to an eight seed, they would play in a tournament in which the nine seed would be, need to beat the eight seed twice, and the eight seed would only need to win once. Ooh. Some real, some real heavy. Uh, sudden death, but it sucks. Edition. Yeah, basically, um, and realistically, it looks like the reason they're doing this is because of the Washington Wizards. I know they invited more teams from the West, but realistically, the Wizards were in the weird middle ground where they could have still made an Eastern Conference playoff push. Right, they could have made, it. and so they're yeah. like, "Yeah, we'll give it to you." And then because they both brought the Wizards, everyone in the West was like, well, what about us? Right. We're already better than them. <laughs> yeah. So they all were like, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of that's sort of the interesting part of it. Um, and then I think once they, they're going to regular playoffs after that, uh, like I don't think they're doing anything weird and reseeding or anything stupid. I just want to see these finals. I, I'm intrigued. Uh, I think this really helped the Lakers. The La Lakers? I think it did because this let LeBron James just sit down and rest. And the last Why would he ever do that? Well, listen. He's LeBron James. He's going to be a Space Jam too. Nobody, nobody would say it, but 35-year-old LeBron James probably wanted – to rest. That's but, insane. Can't believe it's ever said that about LeBron James. <laughs> but there's like 16 games left. Let's see. The Lakers were they were the one seed, 49 and 14, six games ahead of the Clippers. Who yeah, was supposed to be the best team in the NBA. Uh, right. Three, so there were 19 games left on the schedule, and the Lakers were in cruise control. So I'm. I, I kind of feel like this is a huge favor to LeBron James because, A, it cuts off the number of games he has to play to get into the playoffs. It makes it harder for him to lose the one seed because he's already six games up. And there's only eight games left. Um, and then to top all of that off, he has to, like, rest his body for three months and get it ready. Yeah. Um, I think this is a dangerous thing for the NBA. Uh, because here's what's crazy. So the Lakers are 49 and 14. And then the Clippers, the Nuggets, the Jazz, the Thunder, and the Rockets are all four games apart. 
Clippers are forty four and twenty, and then the Rockets are forty and twenty four. Mm-hmm. That's that's literally two through six. Whoa. And then there's a little bit of a gap again. But I mean, the West is just so crowded that I don't know. It really is. I don't. I don't know. Like how the they... East is out here with like forty losses, and it's like we can still make eight. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, the, the West is like two through six all have less than twenty or like twenty or less losses. It's like, it's remarkably <laughs> uneven. That's for certain. Twice as almost twice as many losses, and they're still like vying for a spot. Yeah, the Wizards. Like if they were in the West, they wouldn't have even been invited to the tournament. No, not at all. The Phoenix Suns are twenty six and thirty nine. Right, <laughs> and they're the thirteenth seed in the West. Yeah, the Wizards, if they were a Western Conference team, would have no business even getting getting a phone call. They'd be home right now. Right, they'd be they'd be team number fifteen in the West. So I, I do think that's a little interesting, but I but I. West the Wizards stacked. gotta be pumped to finally at least get into the playoffs and finally be talking about something other than social issues. Because oh yeah, thing, for sure. The one thing the NBA has been doing has the NBA players, and obviously this just it, it's more their wheelhouse than almost any other league. And it's not a race thing because the NFL I think is probably more black or just as black as the NBA. Um, but the the NBA. I would, I would, I would disagree because the stars in in football, a lot, of, most of them are white. Okay, all right. I think that's that's probably a fair. You're talking about like quarterbacks and stuff, right? Yeah, like that's the probably player, a fair like the the poster child. But I think the next set of young NFL stars are all black. Like the quarterbacks are black now. Um, yeah, no, for sure. But I'm saying like as of as of right now. Uh, yeah, that's probably fair. But the NBA is just closer to like. Social media and all of that. The the NFL players are always careful about what they say. Oh Whereas, yeah, like the culture. The cultures are completely different, and we've always we've always said that the NBA is a lot more progressive. Yes, yeah, and that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. I guess maybe in, in in the worst way possible, but like the NBA, they they've been more comfortable getting involved in social conversations mm-hmm. than the NFL. The NFL wants nothing to do with them. Right, the NFL just just cares about its bottom dollar, and the NBA is willing to stick its neck out for certain things. Right, and and they're not, and I, and I think what's interesting about that is once the contracts are guaranteed, suddenly the players feel like they can they're protected and can say what they want, right? Because now the owners have to side with the players. I can't right. let my I can't let leave my hundred million dollar player out there to like to drive. So like yeah. I've got to protect him. I've got to back him up. I've got to. I've got to be on his side of these issues. Right, and I think that's that's kind of a really important thing to make because, like, the thing about security is that it's always like it, it's double edged because it's like, well, what if they mess up? But also, like, they can do their best without having to face that repercussion. Well, and that's why you. That's why the the, the teams are, they've started to become careful about who they bet on. Because the era, the era that I came up watching the NBA was this amazing sideshow of guys making hundreds of million dollars that had no business doing it, who were lunatics and egomaniacs and terrible teammates and crazy people, and the contracts were long and the salaries were high and teams were just trapped by these players. And now you come around to this side of it where... These players, they're socially aware, they're intelligent, uh, they're involved, they've got good teams around them. Like, and I mean that personal wise, like managers, agents, like mm-hmm. for the most part, they're getting quality advice and making sound decisions. Like LeBron James is on course to be the first billion and then probably the first trillion dollar athlete. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that's happening because. When he got into endorsements, basically after his first round of endorsement deals as a rookie, he stopped taking endorsement deals that didn't offer equity. Yep. Um, and so all of a sudden, LeBron James isn't just selling your Big Macs for you, but he's turning around and he's he's making himself money when he sells you a Big Mac. And that's a that's a that's a it's wise a way to play the game. 
Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole new level. It might make you less money up front, but you're going to make that back later. Like, yeah, for sure. none it's of these like companies, the, uh... none of these companies are going away. No, no one's like Nike's going to go out of business tomorrow. Right. Let me see if I can Google this real quick while we're talking. But 50 cent on the vitamin water deal. I mean, he made, I want to say, I thought I saw as much as 80 million. Like, that's insane. It's just, it's, it's insane, but it's also insanely smart. Right, because he took, okay, okay, here you go. Uh, in 2007, the Coca-Cola company acquired vitamin water from uh, Glassal for $4.1 billion. According to Washington Post at the time, 50 Cent was thought to have walked over the figure somewhere between 60 and $100 million. <laughs> so vitamin water, son. Jeez. And it's be- it because he took... He took uh, stock on that deal instead of cash. Right, which uh, that was the correct decision. Listen, if someone's offering it to you, you know what's funny is as a consumer, we've become more aware of those things. Like uh, Shark Tank has taught us about equity and things like that. Like there was, a, there was definitely a time when a guy like 50 Cent would have just taken the $5 million up front and been thrilled. And then like the business world has evolved and we've all learned more and suddenly he's like, can I get some shares? <laughs> Can I get some shares of those? Say, man, I think I'm a partner in this venture. Um, we're going to jump out to a break. When we come back, we got more Nerd Club Sports coming your way. The Adventure Begins Comics, Games, and More is open on 1488 at 525 Woodland Square Boulevard. With comics, games, and everything nerd-related, The Adventure Begins is the one-stop nerd shop. On Saturdays, they alternate between having Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, and coming up, they also have cosplay crafting and trivia nights and BYOB nights. They're currently offering a 10% discount for limited time, which will be valid for as long as you grab your books every month. Hey, Conroe, this is Corey DLG of Nerd Thug Radio, hanging out here, just enjoying my quarantine time at home, and I hope everyone else is doing the same, social distancing and minding their manners and listening to the orders while we get all this health stuff, health prices straightened out. You get this pandemic under control. I hope everyone's doing their part to flatten the curve, but doing their part also means supporting small businesses. Local businesses here in Conroe, uh, restaurants, things of that nature that have been able to stay open, they require the support of their community. So takeouts uh, is a good option to do. So reach out to those places, order some takeout food if you can afford it and if it's reasonable. Uh, I'm not asking anyone to risk their health, but this, the community has always relied on the, itself to support itself. And this is one of those times where, as Conroe, we can stand up together and take care of small businesses and entrepreneurs who have been taking care of us this whole time, helping Montgomery County grow into one of the fastest-growing counties in all of America. Uh, thank you very much, and stay safe, and stay tuned for more Nerd Thug Radio. This is Rudy Townjanovich, and welcome to Nerd Thug Radio. Welcome back to Nerd Thug Sports right here on 104.5, 106.1, the sister stations, and worldwide at IronStar.com. Um, yeah, so I, I do think that uh, the NBA is coming back, but baseball has already beat them to it. Baseball is playing what they call practice games. Which wow, are totally what a concept. Totally made up. Um. The other day, Aaron Judge of the Yankees hit the first three-out homer in the history of baseball. I don't know what that is. A three-out homer. It's exactly what it sounds like. Um, they were towards the end of the game. I think six or I think seven, six or seventh inning. And right now, as they're warming up, pitchers have pitch counts they, they're supposed to get to to throw what's called a simulated game. Uh-huh. So uh, the Yankees were playing someone, I don't remember what it was. It might have been the Orioles. might have been. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, the pitcher on the mound was a couple pitches short of his counts for the day. And rather than have him sit down and come back up, the manager for the other team said, hey, can we throw a couple more pitches this inning? Let's just play it out a little bit more. My guy's only a couple pitches off. And the Yankees manager said, yeah, sure, no problem, whatever. So Aaron Judge comes up there to bat even though technically the inning is over. It's three outs. Yeah. 
And he then hits a home run. Cool. So it's now the first ever three out home run. Uh, no, it's not. Don't lie to me. First ever three out home run. I, I mean, hate it was baseball. It was televised. I don't know what else to tell you. It happened. I hate baseball. <laughs> oh my God. This is the worst sport ever. They These are the kind of people. Not to end the ending. They were like, uh, let's just keep playing. And the other guys were like, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> right. And that's going to be in the books forever. Yeah, it forever. counts. I mean, this in- isn't, they haven't started the season yet. But I mean, it happened now. Yeah, it's happened now. Someone's going to be in like future space year 2032, which is only like 12 years from now. Like, hey guys, remember, remember, remember that one time someone hit a, a three-out home run? That yeah, was TV crazy. Was yeah, the vid files still show it. <laughs> right, three and ESPN shows it all the time. <laughs> right, and it's nothing. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. By the way, after he gave up the home run, they were like, "All right, let's just go ahead and end this inning. Forget it. Never mind." <laughs> yeah, as soon as they started losing, they're like, "Hold on a second. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> um, so the you know, I said I wanted to continue. I lied. Yeah, I, listen. We, you know what? It turns out we don't need any more pitches off of him. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> nice hit. Nice hit. Uh, the Astros in their first game back earlier this week. Uh, they had three guys thrown at. I think that's going to be a regular occurrence this season. And I think it's petty and stupid, and I hate everyone else. Um, can I understand, in baseball, the feeling is if they hadn't cheated, they wouldn't have won. And that's not necessarily true. It is the feeling, though. And to that, I say, get over yourselves. You didn't even make it that far in the first place. <laughs> Why don't you tell them how you really feel, man? Look, I I hate baseball so much. <laughs> like, not only is it the worst in terms of money for young people, it's hard to get into. The minor leagues suck. Uh, they don't know what to do with themselves. And the fact that it's super boring to watch and the television's bad. And there's, like, gentleman rules and people get upset and throw balls at people trying to injure them because they're salty. Like, get over yourselves. I hate <laughs> baseball so much. This is a good list. Like, I'm impressed that you've even paid enough attention about baseball over the years to make a list like this. Like, I, everything about baseball makes me livid. It's okay, almost so as bad as college thing. sports. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's not too far from it, I feel like. Let me ask you this, though. Just in all devil's advocate practicality, the other side of the coin. Mm-hmm. So you, do you think it's relevant at all that the Astros cheated their way through most of 2017? No. Even though that's the year they wind up winning the World Series. No, because even if you know, there's no way because what they did was what they did was basically just sign stealing, which technically is a rule, but you learn about it and you adapt. Like there's no like it's a it's it's one of those stupid unwritten rules that like no one can really enforce and i think they just they played their cards wrong okay all right okay i i mean i don't think i disagree with your with your principle which is that sign stealing is part of the game i think i think baseball's problem in general is that cheating is always allowed until it's not yeah, like it has such a hard, it has such a malleable like. Oh, but this isn't allowed, but this is, but that's like you're not supposed to steal signs. It's like yeah, but I'm looking at him do things and have a four minute conversation on the mound where he, one guy keeps throwing up gang signs and the other one keeps nodding or saying <laughs> yes. Like, like there's no way I'm not gonna figure that out. Like people aren't dumb. <laughs> Right. Well, and that's the thing is stealing signs is known and accepted because when a runner's on second 
pitchers and catchers switch signs anticipating the sign steal. Right. Like, and the same thing happens in football. That's why, what's his name, used to throw out 50 bogus calls and one real one. That's right. Peyton Manning used to, all the time, he would he was audibling, and he was calling fake audibles and live audibles as a mix. Um, there, uh, And Bill Belichick used to uh, have a guy watch the other sidelines because while on offense, they, they moved away from the sign stealing they moved in, they put the microphones in the helmets. On defense, they didn't for a long time. And finally, it was Bill Belichick being so good at sign stealing that they finally just, they were like, okay, we got we to gotta put microphones in the defense. Um, so <laughs> the other sports have moved away from this. Right. Um, and, like, this is, this is just a, like. It is just it, a baseball problem. Right. Like, you, you know how you instantly alleviate that? Give you a microphone to the catcher and the pitcher. And just have them do every single thing, every single time they're on television, where they cover their mouth with their glove and they talk. Uh, I think the only problem with that might be the batter there could probably hear the catcher. No, like the pitcher, the pitcher is just calling it at that point. Oh, that's not a bad idea. And the catcher saying yes or no. Yeah. That's a pretty good idea. I, I don't hate that, actually. Like, you wow, modern play. technology. <laughs> But again, baseball doesn't do modern technology, so it's kind yeah, because they're the worst matter. sport. <laughs> kind of doesn't matter. Um, and the reality of it is, yeah, they're just too comfortable with cheating until they get caught. So steroids, the steroids era in baseball was a decade of just absolute cheating, and everyone was doing it because everyone knew everyone else was. And instead of getting it out of the game, they just got it deeper into the game and to the point where with the players union and the league sat down and, and said, okay, we've got a problem with it because the media had already figured it out and there was a big story break and uh, Jose Canseco had written the books that basically outed and named like 30 active players and people were testifying to Congress. It was a mess. Um, and so baseball and the players union said, they sat down and they said, we're going to do one anonymous test right away. And if 50% or I think it was like 30% of the anonymous tests come back positive, we immediately are going to institute a drug program. And they were negotiating on the drug program while the tests went out. And I think something closer to 45% of anonymous tests came back negative or came back positive and immediately kicked in a drug program. And that just kind of proved that the league, like while they were bad mouthing steroid users, listen, if those, that are your, people, those are your stars. Well, but, but more importantly than that, if that many people came back as positive, but every baseball player you talked to to a person was against it, some of those people are lying to your face right now. Right. There's probably a guy taking steroids telling you that steroids are bad. Yeah, telling you, oh, we got to get him out of the game. But then he's, he's shooting up his, his B12, finger quote, B12 in the locker room before the game. Um, and that's the thing is there's kind of just this weird comfort with cheating. Uh, and now certain players are unfairly targeted. Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens will probably never get in the Hall of Fame because of steroids. Um, despite holding records. Despite holding records, and most importantly, despite not being the only ones. Yeah. Well, and I... that's kind of the new thing. That's, that, that brings me back to the Astros. With the It's 2017, they cheated, but they did win without cheating. They're going to be unfairly punished because they were the one who got caught. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they weren't the first ones to do it. I mean, like, you saw other people got fired as soon as the decision with the Astros went through. Well, and, and the Yankees had gotten in trouble the year or two before, and it's coming out now that what they were told public, what we were told publicly isn't really, it's actually worse than that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I, I do think they're going to keep catching flack for it. Oh, no, for sure. Because people are petty, but the thing that's going to like, the the thing that upsets me is that like, we still made the run all the way up to the world series again, or we get the third. Well, we were in the world series just two years later. Yeah. Yeah. And we Uh, we got the nationals. Yeah, okay. We made it that far. 
Like, what other team has done that? <laughs> no, we're definitely in an era of good baseball for the Astros, and I, but I think, unfortunately, My- 2017 lets other people now just talk bad about us every time we do good. Right. We're going to be cheaters now forever. Right, which is stupid because we're not the only ones, but we're just going to – it's calling out people – when you know you're also not a hundred percent, it's 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 petty and it is. Really... And who knows how many of them are doing something similar or close to it? That's what I'm saying. Like, it it's only as soon as something comes out about you, you're gonna look even worse because you're. It's like, oh, we were talking about them for so long, right? Okay, so, so you mentioned the uh, space year 2032. Uh-huh. Uh, you and Mookie Betts are gonna be the two that have it si- uh, circled on the calendars now. Why? Mookie Betts just signed a 12-year, $365 billion extension with the Dodgers. Cool. Um, so that takes him through the 2032 season. It's so far. And it's baseball, so it's all guaranteed. It includes a record $65 million. Oh, uh, that's pretty good. It's a good day. It's a good day for him, no doubt. Yep, too bad he's stuck in a game for 12 years. Well, he's 27 now. He'll be 39 when this deal is over. <laughs> right. He'll he'll be four. He'll be almost 40 years old. Cool. Uh, you know what's funny is that, like, yeah, that's a lot of money. But he like, if he was good at any other sport, he would have had he would have had it way faster. Yeah, the deal probably wouldn't be this big, but he'd have more money already. Right. Yeah, he might see like yeah, at 28 years old, he already would have signed like one. Eighty million dollar deal, and then he'd sign a four year, hundred and fifty million dollar deal on top of it. So that's two fifty right there in four years. Like right, and then and then he can retire at like thirty two instead of like you know, an extra seven years. <laughs> um, it doesn't say how much is deferred. That's kind of the new thing now in baseball is deferred payments. Uh, oh yeah, because they don't want to pay you now because that'd be ridiculous. Well, I noticed they were doing it more and more. When Bryce Harper didn't stay uh, in Washington with the Nationals, he took a three hundred thirty million dollar deal uh, somewhere else. And one of the first criticisms was like, you know, uh, Washington came out and said, "Well, we offered the same amount of money." So Bryce Harper said, "Well, no, they didn't. They offered a uh, hundred million dollars in deferred money. So no, they didn't offer me three hundred million. They offered me two hundred million and a promise. And that's true. That's a that's a that's a fair way to look at that." Um, there are players like Albert Pujols who are scheduled to receive over a hundred million dollars after they retire. I don't know about that one, but here's the thing that drives me crazy about it: is baseball's going to tell you that they're broke? Right? No, it's exactly. It. They're going to be like, "Oh darn, you know the books aren't really adding up." How about next year? And you're like, "Oh darn." They're sitting around right now negotiating with players, trying to get everything straight for this mini season, and someone just signs a four hundred million dollar contract. Like you can't. Yeah, again, problem with baseball. It's poorly managed. <laughs> Here's a funny uh, tweet or text from a quote. I'm sorry, from Mike Trout. Asked about the contract. He said, "I'm excited for him." We kind of went through the same situation. I was laughing because of the physical he probably had to take because mine lasted about 10 hours. Mike Trout, who famously signed a $426 million contract. Cool. Uh, He said, so being close to him now, it's pretty cool to have him out here in Southern California. It's great. But talking about uh, the physical, I am sure they go over – any possible thing. They're trying to, they're like, we want you for the next 10 plus years of your life. So you're going to make sure that you're going to be alive. <laughs> I'm sure the knees and elbows and ankles and wrists are like shoulders. shoulders. Yeah. I'm sure they are just looked over like a mechanic. Uh, we're going to jump out to a break. When we come back, we got more nerd fight sports coming your way. The Adventure Begins Comics, Games, and More is open on 1488 at 525 Woodland Square Boulevard. With comics, games, and everything nerd-related, The Adventure Begins is the one-stop nerd shop. On Saturdays, they alternate between having Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. And coming up, they also have cosplay crafting and trivia nights and BYOB nights. 
They are currently offering a 10% discount for limited time, which will be valid for as long as you grab your books every month. Hey, Conros, this is Corey DLG of Nerd Thug Radio, hanging out here, just enjoying my quarantine time at home, and I hope everyone else is doing the same, social distancing and minding their manners and listening to the orders while we get all this health stuff, health prices straightened out and get this pandemic under control. I hope everyone's doing their part to flatten the curve, but doing their part also means supporting small businesses. Local businesses here in Conroe, uh, restaurants, things of that nature that have been able to stay open, they require the support of their community, so take out uh, is a good option to do. So reach out to those places, order some takeout food if you can afford it and if it's reasonable. Uh, I'm not asking anyone to risk their health, but this, the community has always relied on the, itself to support itself. And this is one of those times where as Conroe, we can stand up together and take care of small businesses and entrepreneurs who've been taking care of us this whole time, helping Montgomery County grow into one of the fastest growing counties in all of America. Uh, thank you very much and stay safe. And stay tuned for more Nerd Thug Radio. Hi, this is Kevin Smith, former Dallas Cowboy, Texas a and Aggie as well. And I want to say what's up to Nerd Thug Radio. Well, welcome back to Nerd Thug Sports right here on 104.5, 106.1, Sister Stations. And, of course, we're streaming worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Um, as always, make sure to go to Facebook.com backslash Nerd Thug Radio. Uh, that's where it all goes down. That's where we make the good things happen. Uh, right now we are still in the process of giving away a PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or Nintendo Switch. Winner's choice. Make sure you're liking, sharing, subscribing, reviewing. Make sure you're doing that and putting that out there. Um, this week I was going on a tagging spree, just tagging as many people on my social media as possible. I want to, uh, listen, we're giving away a console. Someone's going to win this thing. Could it's be. true. It could be. Make- Make sure you're emailing to nerdthugradio at gmail.com all the screenshots of you entering the contest. Uh, that's how those are your official entries. No limit on entries. Again, like, share, subscribe, or review. Screenshot it. Email the screenshots to nerdthugradio at gmail.com. Those entries are gold because somebody is one of the game system. It's true. Um, all right. Nico, you want to tell everybody about the Adventure Begins comics games and more before we move on? The Adventure Begins Comic Games and More is open, and they have full operating hours. However, you are required to wear a mask if you are to come inside of the store. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, they still do have curbside and delivery services available if you want to get your nerd at home, or if you just want to be a little bit safer. Uh, They also still have private rooms available if you so desire. They do have table space, but at 50% capacity. And it's the free comic book summer. Big deal. You come into the store, get your freebies, you get a little passport, and every time you come in on the new Wednesday of each week, all, all the way up until September 9th. So this this runs for a long time. It's like it's like nine weeks or something like that. It's like a great oh, period. Yeah, that is a lot. Yeah, so come in, you can uh, pick up your free stuff, and you get a little stamp in your passport, and then you can turn that passport in. You don't have to have all of them, uh, but if you even if you get only some of them, if you miss one or two, it's okay. Uh, you still get your loyalty points for it. So you get free discounts. You can use those points for the private room or other discounts in the store. And the adventure begins, comes into more. A fantastic store, wonderful staff, very clean, family friendly. It's a wonderful place. Head on down. I definitely recommend getting involved with the adventure begins, comics, games, and more. Uh, they got my books in a little box. They hold them for me. I buy them. I get my discount. I use my points. I get ten dollars off of action figures. You got like a, you got like a million points at this point. <laughs> I do. I used some more, so I'm down to 104. I think is what I was told. Um, but that's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna find opportunities to spend more money and, and bring them back up because I love the adventure begins. Um, so we got one more segment here, right here on Nerd Thug Sports. Uh, we've been having fun today. The NFL would like you to know that they have confirmed. But if fans are allowed at NFL games this season, they will have to wear a mask. Oh no! I want to I want to reiterate a part of that sentence. If fans are allowed at games, if if this probably means that you know. So there's basically. The players in the league are very, very close to an agreement. 
they're circling a 45 day run up before the start of the league that sort of make the September 12th opener. I think that means they have to start in the, by the end of next week, I believe. Um, mm. And so what they're looking at, or early next week, something like that, because um, they want like 10 days of non-contact conditioning, then they want two weeks of training camp, and then they want like, I think it's like 10 more days of something. Uh, and then roster cuts, and then boom, you're in. Um, the Jets and the Giants announced on Monday, though, that there will be no fans at their home games at MetLife Stadium until further notice. Right now in New Jersey, Phil Murphy, the governor, has limited the number of people who can attend outdoor gatherings to 500. Um Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis said he is leaning toward not having fans attend games at the new stadium just yet. Uh, The broke Los Angeles Rams announced Tuesday that the new SoFi Stadium will be at limited or no capacity this season. Limited or no trying to – limited as in they want want a little bit of money. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, if you could just put some money in the boot and pass it around, that would be a big help. Uh, Did you see – I saw a clip of a church using a remote control car. To pass the collection oh, plate. That's fun. like how fun is that? Is that fun? I, I don't. I, I like anything. Like anything that's like really novel, like like a, like a drone or like <laughs> remote control car. Like I, I think it's really funny. <laughs> I think a pandemic is maybe the wrong time to pass around the collection plate. I mean, maybe, but you know, some people aren't aren't that bad. Some people continue to work the entire time. No, no, I, I totally agree, but I, I feel like the pandemic is maybe when like we, we Look, bunker. If, if down. you're believing, if you're believing in the word of God, then you believe in the time because the money will eventually come back to you. That's God's will. No, but that's in like uh, prosperity gospel. Do regular churches also say like if you give it, you'll get it back? Is that a, is that is that like a hundred percent standard? I always thought it was just like, hey, other people need money too, jerk. No, it, it's like it's like if you if you give money to the church, then the Lord shall provide type deal. But that's prosperity, like that's prosperity preaching, and the other pastors speak out against that. So I know that it can't be all of them. No, it's not all of them, but I mean, is that all of them that take tithe though? I mean, that's usually. I mean, that's the that's the literal biblical tithing. That's what it that's what it talks about. Okay. In the all Bible. Right. All right. Uh, Philadelphia City officials last week announced that no fans would be allowed in the stands during Eagles games in 2020. But a day later, the Philadelphia mayor said, uh, well, I mean, if they want. <laughs> so, I mean, they're not, maybe. They're not on the same page. Uh, yeah, he Atlanta was like, no. Falcons, and the, uh, the mayor's like, but I wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, he was like, uh, I got tickets, bro. Um, the Atlanta Falcons have detailed plans for hosting between 10 and 20,000 fans at home games. So uh, it sounds like everyone's all over the place. I think more of it has to do with like how bad it is where you're at. Yeah. Um, Like if you're in Colorado where like nothing's happening, like you should be fine. So the Broncos could just have what, like half stadium? Are you saying like whole stadium? What do you think? Uh, Probably. I mean, maybe not a whole stadium, but I mean, Considering that Colorado opened at the same time like Georgia did and has like nothing happened to it. Yeah, that's a good point. That's yeah. uh That's a good point. Hmm. Like some places just aren't hit that bad. <laughs> Maybe just everyone in Colorado's immune, who knows? <laughs> uh, that's a, I'm looking at this. There's this weird headline. I'm trying to figure this out here. Okay. Uh, this is on ESPN, uh, posted uh, from Wednesday night here. Okay. Uh, Marcus, edge rusher Marcus Golden had his rights revert to the New York Giants at 4 p.m. Uh, Wednesday. He, this is weird. He, I've never heard of this. Golden had previously been given a rare May 5th tender. He had until Wednesday or the start of training camps 
to sign a deal with another team. Otherwise, his rights reverted to the Giants at 110% of his 2019 salary. The salary will be $4.125 million with another $1 million available if he hits double-digit sacks. Why is, what's happening here? Golden led the Giants last year with 10 sacks. Golden was perhaps the Giants. Uh, da, 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 da. He led the team in sacks, tackles for loss, and quarterback hits while making $4.75 million on a one-year prove-it deal. The Giants don't currently have a player on the roster who had more than four and a half sacks. He spent the first four years of his career with the Cardinals, but his time there was derailed with a knee injury. He returned in 2018 and finished with two and a half sacks in 11 games, so he admitted he wasn't himself. He then had a bounce back year in 2019 with the Giants. This so, he had, so he had a good year, and they were basically like, well, see if you can go somewhere else. If not, then come back. No, I don't quite the Giants place rare unrestricted free agent tender on Golden. Okay, here we go. This is going to explain what's going on because I've never heard of this before. Uh, and you know me. I'm a nut for weird roster stuff. I love these things. Um, the New York Giants elected to place a rare unrestricted free agent tender on outside linebacker Marcus Golden. So this isn't a franchise tag. This is a unrestricted free agent tag. The May 5th tender allows Golden to negotiate a deal with other teams. The Giants don't get any compensation if he signs elsewhere. But if he doesn't, he becomes... Okay, okay. If he signs with someone else, then he gets counted in for the Giants' uh, compensatory pick formula. And if he doesn't sign with anyone, he reverts to the Giants at 110% pay raise. Hmm. So basically, they were like, well, it's not a lot of money for to bring back a really good pass rusher. The most notable recent use of the May 5th tender was by the Patriots on the Garrett Blunt. He did sign with the Eagles, so it didn't matter. Um, there are a lot of teams who kind of game the system. The compensatory pick formula is in the NFL draft, after the third round, the NFL awards picks based on a formula that takes into account players you lose in free agency versus players you you signed in free agency versus uh, performance of your like last year's draft picks. Kind of a sort of a thing. So that seems like they take a lot of variables there. They do. Um but a lot of teams game it. The Patriots regularly are in the top two or three for comp- compensatory draft picks uh, because they will they will end depending on the salary and the performance of the guys who leave versus the salary and performance of the guys that come in. Oh my god! Yeah, like a lot of stuff goes into it. But the Giants or the uh, the Patriots have like they have cracked the code on it. Um, so it sounds like initially for the Giants. They probably expected someone else to sign him, but they were just going to get a little bit of credit, a little bit of love in next year's formula. Mm -hmm. But then he doesn't sign anywhere, and now they get a discounted pass rusher. If I was him, like he should just, he should have just taken a deal. Yeah, especially if he was on a one-year. I hate like if it's not a proven deal, then don't call it that. (laughs) Hey, you're, uh, did you mess with your headphones just now? You, you you sound totally different. Oh, yeah, I think I just leave it on them. Yeah, you can't do that. It's, you know technology in your house. It's, it ceases to exist as soon as I look at it wrong. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Actually? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I was saying, I, I honestly, I think that, Marcus Golden and his team just screwed up here because they could have signed anywhere and it wouldn't have cost the new team anything to sign him. Like, they didn't have to give the Giants anything to get him. Right, yeah. And he, I mean, he looked like he did pretty good, so. Yeah. uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I definitely think he screwed up by not signing somewhere. Although, listen, 110% pay raise is better than most people get. That's true. Now, let me ask you this. This is always a weird thing, and I think sports are totally different. But every once in a while, I think about what it all looks like to the other guy. Like, right now in this world, in this climate, in this economy, with everything going on, 
does he look Marcus Golden? Does he look? How does he look if he wants to fight this or he doesn't want to sign it because he's not happy with the number? Blah blah blah. Oh man, I don't, I don't know because it's such a weird spot. I feel like it's hard for him to ask if anyone anything to sign him for any higher because of all the crazy stuff that's been going on. Like we're in an era of like historic highs in terms of salaries, but also in this unprecedented like dip in everyone's pockets. Right, like Jadavian Clowney remains unsigned. Yeah, and I mean he's no slouch. Uh, now he is asking for apparently crazy money. I mean, uh, it's um, it's true, but he probably that he he probably thinks he's worth that much. But unfortunately, I think a, a proclivity to injury and, um, you know, finishing the season is also pretty important too. You know, it is, and unfortunately for him, last year wasn't great. Yeah, like he didn't like he and he started this, his season really strong, but he didn't finish it very well. No, he didn't, he finished it with the sports hernia, and I think he led the Seahawks with sacks, but he only had like I think four. Yeah, and, not, and no one else on the team even had more than two. I think like like it was a mess. The whole back, the whole they were a mess as a as a unit. The whole defensive front was bad, but he was part of it. Like you know, you yeah. say we sucked and then go, but give me money. Like, hey, I know we didn't do that great, but look at me, I did pretty good. Should sign me. It's like, eh. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I just think it's kind of complicated. Um. But if I you gotta you gotta chase a deal there, like even if it's a nine million dollar, you you know what your bottom is now. You know you're getting 110 percent from the Giants, so I think you go out there and you get yourself something from somebody. But I don't know. And maybe and maybe it's it's hard to find free. I mean, this might be be a really awkward free agency for a lot of these players because everything's well, so sure. uncertain. For sure, like you can't uh, travel like, hard plus doctors. Uh, like you can't get the physicals done with teams. This is this is a weird. Like this, this might be a hundred percent. Like they offered him this deal, and then this happened to him. Like it might have just been the timing. Maybe that's a possibility. Like um, it's not like they. It's not like they they gave him this deal back when everything was normal. Right. Yeah. Or like when it started, and it's like, well, figure it out. It's like we probably made the deal, and he was like, well, I have time, and then it was like, oh, never mind, I didn't, I guess. It turns out I don't have time. Uh, turns out the world exploded. <laughs> no joke. Speaking of out of time, that's us. We are out of time today. Uh, as always, little brother Nico, good job. Thank you for uh, for a C minus effort. Um, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> thoughts and prayers go out to the Ford family uh, dealing with the loss in the family. Uh, but a uh, friend of the show. Uh, but uh, oh, no. on behalf of little Very brother sorry. Nico, and uh, on behalf of myself, an adventure begins. Same Nerd Thug time, same Nerd Thug channel. Stay safe, stay clean, uh, keep your hands clean, uh, be kind, be gentle, and uh, yeah, fight the man and uh, Black Lives Matter. Thanks for listening, guys. You can only bake so many loaves of homemade sourdough. It's time to treat yourself and dine out again. You've earned it. And if you want to, make it a night out in the city. Indiana residents can save up to 50% off hotel stays. The city of Indianapolis is excited to welcome you back safely. Check out visitindy.com for more details on your favorite restaurant reopening plans. In times of need, this is what most insurance sounds like. Thank you for holding. What's your policy number? But when you have coverage from AAA, you've got insurance with three A's. And that sounds like this. Thank you for calling AAA. Is everyone okay? This is the sound of the savings you get on insurance. But this is the sound of AAA savings when you include a membership with your coverage. Insurance with AAA? That's service worth singing about. Insurance. 
So does your insurance sound like insurance? Or does it sound like insurance with AAA, a brand that's been helping members for over 100 years? Visit AAA.com slash insurance for a free quote and save up to 20% on auto and home. You know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. Trust me, it's worth the wait. Those weekend golf guys every Monday night at 5 here on RTF Sports Network. Join me, John Ashton, and my co host, Jeff Smith, Golf Digest's number one golf instructor in Indiana. You'll learn how to play better, you'll learn how to lower your scores, and you'll learn how to laugh for a full hour every Monday night at 5. Those weekend golf guys here on RTF Sports Network. Hmm. I wonder what I'll do now that I don't have to share the stage with my co-host from Twist, the Week in Sports Talk. Whatever I want. Tune in to Mike on the Mic for a fresh take on sports and life on the RTF Sports Network. Do you want to get inside the mind of Matt Benz, co-host of Twist, the weekend sports talk? Well, tune in to Benzie's bit to find out what he really thinks about sports and life on the one and only RTF Sports Network. You know what that sound is? That's the sound of a new time and a new day for Mike on the Mic on the RTF Sports Network. Every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. Mike on the Mic, a spinoff show of Twist, the weekend sports talk. Those Weekend Golf Guys is the golf podcast for people who think golf podcasts are boring. Oh, sure, all the others are boring. We're not. You should check us out right here, 5 o'clock, Monday night. RTF Sports Network, the network of champions. You play golf now, you'll play better golf. You don't play golf, you're going to want to play golf. You get bored easy? (laughs) Not with us. Those Weekend Golf Guys, 5 p.m., RTF Sports Network. Check us out Monday night, 5 p.m., Monday night at 5 rtf sports network you want sports talk we got your sports talk i like soccer you ready for your uh, cody bellinger fun fact of the week connor cook can sling it we're strikeout beer and no one takes sports more seriously than us yeah i'm a bandwagoner pickle Uh, dave check out strikeout beer live wednesdays at 7 p.m on facebook youtube spreaker rtfsportsnetwork.com and catch replay anywhere you listen to your podcast. Are you at home trying to figure out how to get your kids ready for another year of school? Don't worry. Strikeout Beer has got you covered. We're educational. J-E-T-S, Jets. We won two world wars without stretching. <laughs> kids, if you have any questions, just refer to Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Check out Strikeout Beer live Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, Spreaker, rtfsportsnetwork.com. This is Jesse from the Infinity Sports Podcast. And this is Sully. Make sure to download the latest episode. You can find the Infinity Sports Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere podcasts exist. This is Wayne G., host of Infinity Sports, the best sports podcast in the country. Catch us on the RTF Sports Network Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. If you aren't already listening to us, it'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> you know what that sound is? That's the sound of a new time and a new day for Mike on the Mic on the RTF Sports Network. Every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. Mike on the Mic, a spinoff show of Twist, the weekend sports talk. You know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. 
Trust me, it's worth the wait. Those Weekend Golf Guys, every Monday night at 5 here on RTF Sports Network. Join me, John Ashton, and my co-host, Jeff Smith, Golf Digest's number one golf instructor in Indiana. You'll learn how to play better, you'll learn how to lower your scores, and you'll learn how to laugh for a full hour. Every Monday night at 5, Those Weekend Golf Guys, here on RTF Sports Network. You can only sing karaoke to your dog so many times. It's your turn to see live music again. You've earned it. And if you want to, make it a night out in the city. Indiana residents can save up to 50% off hotel stays. The city of Indianapolis is excited to welcome you back safely. Check out visitindy.com for more details on your favorite music venue reopening plans. Sports Radio Network. Great moments are born from great opportunity. And that's what you have here. That's what you've earned here tonight. Forget about the crowds, the size of the school, their fancy uniforms. And remember what got you here. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch because we know when we add up all those inches, that, that, that's going to make the f***ing difference between winning and losing. It's down to the wire with, 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 with Errol Marks and Speedy Petey. I'll be, I'll be. On the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Down to the Wire. We are live every single Monday and Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. New York Eastern Time. You can call us at 631-965-4990. Remember, you can go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. And you can download our app by going to iOS. You go to WWSRN. Or you can go to our Android and go to the Play Store and go to Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Uh, we have a great show lined up for you guys today, even though it's only going to be an hour show today. We had some technical difficulties. We have a special guest here today. As you guys know, you know him as Mark. Uh, he was part of the Morning Boys with uh, Ryan Hickey, but we have him in studios today. So what's going on, Mark? How are you? Hey, guys. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me here. I guess what was an error makes up with me being here, so I get rewarded for something going wrong. Well, I don't know about rewarded for something going wrong, but we have a great, great show lined up for you guys today. Um, we want to get into the whole Jamal Adams situation. Me and Eric displayed our interest in arguments to the whole Jamal Adams trade. We will talk about Tom Thibodeau uh, and kind of our thoughts with Tom Thibodeau. I would like to hear Mark's thoughts with Tom Thibodeau. I'd like to know Speedy's thoughts on Mark Thibodeau. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Tom Thibodeau. I called him Mark Thibodeau. <laughs> Um, and uh, we're going to get into the whole baseball situation with the New York Yankees. We have a hot New York Yankee hitting the ball, and Aaron Judge will get into that a little bit later. We have an hour to get into it, so we're not even going to go into what happened all over the weekend and uh, the world, uh, and obviously the weekend crunch. So why don't we get into the whole Jamal Adams situation? And I, I said it very, very easy and, and straightforward on the weekend crunch this weekend uh, with Eric Coleman. And I said that Jamal Adams has been an absolute baby since he's come to the New York Jets organization. The Jets gave him the opportunity in the sixth pick of the first round a couple of years ago, about three and a half years ago, and took Jamal Adams. There were a bunch of teams that passed over on him. I don't know why they passed on him. I thought he was the best player in the draft, maybe the second or third best player in the draft. It was very surprising that the New York Jets passed on him. But not only that, when you look at the Jets organization as a whole, you, you look at the, the ingredients of non-success. The New York Jets have not been a successful organization for a very, very long time. They haven't won a Super Bowl since 1969. Uh, the ownership uh, went, all, you know, not only when you talk about the ownership going back and forth with new owner after new owner after new owner, the, the Johnson family took over the Jets organization in the early 2000s. And this is this has been a complete shamble of an organization since they've taken over. Rex Ryan took over for Eric Mangini. He had two successful years, and then everything started falling apart and tearing apart from the team that Eric Mangini built. 
Then you look at the team as a whole right now, and you go up and down the rosters. Where are their superstars? You look at their quarterback. Is Sam Darnold a superstar? We don't even know if he can stay in for a full season. He hasn't had a full season in, uh, since the since he's come, really since USC. He has not played a full season. He had a leg injury his first year. Then he had uh, mono his second year. This is a kid that's played very well in the second half, but up and down, really, for the New York Jets. And you bring in C.J. Mosley. Now C.J. Mosley has opted out of the season because of COVID-19. So this will be a second year that the Jets lost C.J. Mosley oh, for a whole season. He did. He was. Yeah, you didn't hear about that? No, I did not hear about that. Well, he opted out of the contract. So, wow. uh that's just another problem the New York Jets have. But all in all, when you look at this organization, and, and I, can, I can argue where the Jets are or what the Jets are as an organization, uh, where Joe Douglas is in the draft, we don't know what this draft is going to uh, is going to put on, you know, give the Jets that opportunity to be a good team. We, we don't know what Mekhi Beckham is going to be. We don't, we don't know what um, uh, Mims is going to be. We don't know what... Ashton Davis is going to be. We don't know what any of their top draft picks are going to be. And that's what usually happens when you go into the draft. You kind of nitpick and and you try to get the best player available on your draft board. But this is an organization that has had crazy people in their locker room. Let's go up and down their roster. Geno Smith, a couple of years ago, gets knocked out by their linebacker and gets his jaw broken. And he was out for practically a whole scene. And that season, and then that gave... Fitzpatrick an opportunity to really completely explode with Brendan uh, Brendan Marshall and uh, uh, Eric Decker, and they had their one of their both of those guys some of their best years as a, as a player in the NFL, and they still didn't make the playoffs that year. You you look at this team as a whole, and and I know a lot of people are going to look at the Jets, and I'm a Jet fan, and I'm an honest Jet fan. Is this team ever going to win? That is going to be the question. We talk about the Browns. We talk about the Miami Dolphins. We talk about all the bad, the Bengals, the Cincinnati Bengals. How many times have they gone into the playoffs? And how many times they've lost in the first round with Andy Dalton and, and that, that bag of idiots, okay? But all in all, you, you look at the Jets as an organization. You have a player like Jamal Adams who wanted to bring in Le'Veon Bell, begged practically Le'Veon Bell to come to the team, and telling him that we want to win a championship together, we want to win multiple championships together, and and he practically dragged Le'Veon Bell to the New York Jets organization, and the Jets gave him $13 million a year, worth about $50 million. But then, you get in the next, in the last year and a half, two years, Jamal Adams taking shots at the Jets organization, how poorly they run. Joe Douglas to Mike McCagnan. Mike McCagnan was fired. Then you have Joe Douglas running the organization. Then you bring in guys like Chris Johnson who took over for Woody because Woody wanted to go over there to England to be whatever he wanted to be with, for, for Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, the racist remarks, the utter just absolute ridiculousness from this organization the last couple of years. And then you have Jamal Adams taking shots at the Jets organization that they're a complete mockery and a joke. Meanwhile, this is one of the players and one of the, the players that wanted Adam Gase there. And then all of a sudden, really a couple of weeks ago, saying that Adam Gase is not the guy. He's a complete waste. He's a joke. Meanwhile, when they brought him to the team and brought him to the organization, he loved this signing. He loved Adam Gase. And then all of a sudden, taking shots at the organization, telling them the organization that they're a bag of dunnies. They're idiots. They're a joke. And now all of a sudden, after getting traded to Seattle... He, he speaks for the Jets fans, and he gives the Jets fans that whole, uh, the yeah. whole whatever you want to call thanks, it. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thank you. The, the, nice, the nice attitude saying, we, I love the fans, I love the Jets fans, thank you for bringing me in as one of your own, pretty much walking out of the New York Jets organization and the New York Jets fans. Now we sit back and we look at the trade. And... Maybe Eric, Eric Coleman, you know, he liked the trade. I was very surprised he liked the trade, but right. he liked the trade. But he spoke very highly of Jamal Adams, not taking shots at Jamal Adams, that he walked out of the Jets organization and he wanted $90 million and he thinks he should be the highest paid safety in the league. Meanwhile, he's still under his rookie contract. He has a chance to continue to be that in Seattle, too. Seattle it's a has, joke. He's not going to be anything in Seattle. Seattle does have a rich history of safeties over the years that have it's been one of their positions of priority, so he can definitely continue to grow. But, yeah, the Jets definitely fleeced him for sure. Two first-round picks for, mm-hmm. like we, you and I have both said on the weekend crunch, the, a position that's not really a high-priority position was able to spawn two first-round picks. 
spawned two first round draft picks, a third round pick, mm -hmm. and Bradley McDougal, who is a good safety. Not a great safety, mm -hmm. a good safety. But all in all, it wasn't what the Jets got out of the trade. It was what they got from Jamal Adams after the trade. That's what you have to look at in the big picture. As a fan, as a football fan, when you play for an organization that took a chance for, for, uh, for you, they took a chance with you. Other Six teams passed up on you. Actually, five teams passed up on you. And the Jets took a chance with you. And you become, uh, I, you love the spotlight, you love the press, just like Odell Beckham did. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, when you got what you wanted, you gave, you kept giving, you told the Jets organization as a whole, you don't want to be traded, you just want a, that, that contract, you deserve that contract. You've had two years of a pro Bowl, you know, career. Yeah, and really, the first year, you've been complaining that you should have been a pro Bowl player when you weren't. You became a, a pro ball player your second year, and then you became an all-pro pro, pro ball player your third year. So three years for the New York Jets. By the way, they never saw, they never sniffed a playoff. They never sniffed a playoff berth. And this is, you're talking about Jamal Adams, the greatest safety. He wants to become the greatest safety of all time. Let me tell you something. Until you get into the playoffs and you try to, try, you're not, you're not Ed Reed. You're not. You're not even close. You're not Troy Palomalu. Hey, you're not. A, I I wouldn't even say you're Earl Thomas, okay? And Earl Thomas took his team, Seattle Seahawks, to a Super Bowl, helped them win a Super Bowl, okay? Let's see what Jamal Adams does with that Seattle Seahawks team, because to me, that Seattle Seahawks team is not very good defensively. They have no pass rusher, and their Legion of Boom or the Legion of Goom, and I call them the Legion of Goom, because <laughs> that's what they are. You have Jamal Adams leading the way, and who else do you have over there that really scares you for an organization uh, on, that, on that defense? So all in all, when you look at the Jets, and you look at what they got for that trade, to me, it, they, not only did they fleece them, they got rid of a cancer, a a guy that didn't really respect the organization as a whole and really threw the organization under the bus after he, after the fact when he wanted to p speak to the press. And I will guarantee you fans, and I will tell Eric over and over again, two, three, four years down the road when he gets his contract and he's laughing to the bank, Seattle is going to regret making that trade for Jamal Adams, and Jamal Adams will regret leaving the New York Jets organization when they have Joe Douglas, who knows what he's doing, that's rebuilding this team from the top to the bottom, and he had the opportunity to stay there and help rebuild this team to win a championship. It will be more interesting or more great to win a Super Bowl for the New York Jets than winning a Super Bowl with the Seattle Seahawks when the Seattle won a couple of years ago, seven, eight years ago, and the Jets haven't won for 50 years. All right, we have a first call of the day. You know him from Weapons Hot, the host of Weapons Hot, CJ Desimone. What's up, CJ? What's going on, guys? I'm good, man. What would you like to talk you guys about? Stopped, you guys stopped me right in the middle of my workout when I was hearing you go on your little rant about the New York Jets. And look, Arrow, I got to say, I, I love you to death, but half of your stuff is, half of your stuff is incorrect. Go ahead. Well, why, is why is it incorrect? Why is it incorrect? Okay. Ahead. The New York Jets organization as a whole has been a complete dumpster fire. No doubt. You are 100% correct. Okay. We've had bad general managers like John Idzik, Mike McCagnin, Terry Bradway. The list goes on and on. Okay. But you know what? We finally have a front office now that knows exactly what they're doing. So it took us a long time for, unfortunately, this, uh, this franchise to perform the, the whole rectal cranial inversion, okay, <laughs> PC version for, for, uh, for the family audience out there, okay? The main thing that Jet fans need to make sure that they are keeping focus on is the young players that we now have on this squad right now and how they're going to be developed. Now... Here is where I'm going to call you out a little bit on your little, your little rant. I completely agree with you. Jamal Adams is a baby. He acted like a baby. Okay, you want to know something? All of his garbage that he spewed on social media was all false. Everything that he did was to get himself out of New York. He did not have a problem with Adam Gase. He did not have a problem with Joe Douglas. He wanted to get paid. And the reason being is because... I think, now this is just my personal opinion, 
that the outside people, mainly his father, Mr. George Adams, who we remember, was drafted by the New York Giants in the mid-80s, yeah. I believe, mm -hmm. and turned out to be a scrub. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can almost, on a stack of Bibles, guarantee you that Jamal Adams has his dad in his ear saying, you got to get your money, you got to get your money, you got to get your money. Okay? If Jamal Adams wanted out of the New York Jets organization that bad, he could have made a stink about it last year. He did. Okay, he, he probably could have even made a stink about it the following CJ, the, the past CJ, season. CJ, he did make a stink about it last year. He said it in the middle of the season. Not only did he say something in the middle of the season, after one of the games, I think it was uh, – a week six, I mean, week six or week seven, when he was speaking about how bad the team played, and he, he never he never said anything how bad he played. He just took shots at the team, saying that you know right. I'm not well, going to mention I'm not going to mention any players. I'm not going to, but we played like crap. We played like crap. I I feel right. that I put but my heart okay. out. On it was okay for him to go four and twelve and five and eleven on the top balls. Hey. It was okay for him yeah. to be to be misused and, and mismanaged under Casey Rogers. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you while Greg Williams put the put the player in a in a situation to succeed and mind you, okay, and now we're gonna go back to his rookie season. Mm -hmm. Marcus May was a better player than Jamal Adams. No question. If Marcus May if, if Marcus May didn't get hurt in his rookie year, Marcus May goes to the Pro Bowl. No question. In his rookie season. And Marcus May is going to get a bit, nice contract from the New York Jets at the end of this season. They're not going to have to pay him $90 million. They'll pay him forty five fifty. If the guy could stay on the field, I guarantee you'll have more success. We'll, we'll talk about Marcus May maybe two, three years down the road being a better player than Jamal Adams. Because to me, as good as Jamal Adams is on paper, when you look at his statistics, go look at the teams that they beat and look at the games that he won with where – the games that he beat them and he had all those interceptions were against teams that were terrible. Half of his sacks came overrated, against the Giants. <laughs> overrated teams. Okay? Right. Not good teams. So Jamal Adams sits there and he tells the Jets, oh, I'm the leader of the team. We've, we've heard this for the last three years. I'm the leader of the defense. So you walked out on the defense. You completely turned your back on the New York Jets and the defense. And you walked out on Le'Veon Bell, the same guy that you told the team, you told the player, you, last year when in free agency, I want you to come here and win championships with me. I'm here, I'm here for the long haul. And then all of a sudden, a year later, you demand a trade and you want to go to the Cowboys? We have here, we've heard this CJ for a long, long time. He wants to go play for right. the Cowboys. We've heard it over and over again. So you know what? The Jets. Right. And I can guarantee you at the end of this season, if the Seahawks don't, don't advance deep in the playoffs, if there is a 20, uh, 2020 season, okay, if they don't advance deep in the playoffs, I can guarantee you Jamal's going to start flapping his gums again, mm -hmm. and then Seattle's going to look to dump him off to get back one of the first, one of the two first rounders they gave the Jets for. Send him to Cleveland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> him and Odell could go rot together. That's right. I mean, Odell Beckham oh, is a joke. Uh, Odell Beckham is a joke. He used the press to really get traded. That's what he did. He used the press. He used his platform here in New York to get traded over there to Cleveland. And then you saw Jamal Adams. He wanted to get traded. He didn't go to the Cowboys. He didn't go where he wanted to go. We all know where Odell Beckham wanted to go. He wanted to go to the LA Rams. And he didn't get traded there. The Giants obliged him and they traded him to the Browns because they got as much as they can for him. Jamal Adams got the same, same thing. He got traded to a team right. that he didn't want to go to, but he went there anyways. And now all of a sudden he cried. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear? I mean, I, I read a story that he said when he heard that he got traded to the Seattle Seahawks, he cried in happiness and joy. Are you kidding me? Yep. And then you apologize to the New York Jet fan and saying that I love being a New York Jet and thank you for being. No, he's been. He's, he's a he's joke. He's a face. joke. He's been spitting in the an face of New joke. York Jet fans since uh, since the con since uh, the. The garbage where Joe Douglas took phone calls and he felt like that he was untouchable, like Tom Brady is untouchable. Meanwhile, there's no comparison whatsoever. So he should never mention himself in the same word as Tom Brady. And I hate Tom Brady. Okay. He should never mention himself in that company at all. Okay. So now the, the, the bottom line is, is that Jamal Adams is a fraud. He's gone. The Jets got a haul for him. It's time for us to stop beating this subject to death and just move on. We're not really going to know who wins and who loses from this team or for, from this trade for at least two to three years.
I already we know. Gotta see who, I already who, know. Who, who, CJ, we already know who, who's going to win this trade. We already know, and I'm guaranteeing it. The Jets are not only going to win this trade, they're going to they're going to fleece the Seattle Seahawks. We're going to be talking about this trade, Joe Douglas. This is going to change. This is going to put Joe Douglas on a pedestal as one of the best GMs in the league. I guarantee right. you. I guarantee you. He, this this trade right. I, is going to put I'm, him right I'm up right there. there. I'm right there with you in my belief in Joe Douglas, but you know what? It's still early, and you know what? We all thought the same thing of Mike McCagnin in his rookie year when the Jets went ten and six, and he won Executive of the Year, and then all of a sudden the wheels fell off the wagon for the next four years after that. He made he made so, he was Executive of the Year, and not not because of his trades or n- none of his moves. He won Executive of the Year because he took over a team that Rex Ryan and Mike Tana, Tannenbaum built, and then one year of John Isnick, who actually. Hold in draft picks, and then he completely. Uh, well, who did he draft? Milliner? Uh, who did right. he draft? He didn't draft D. Milliner. I'm sorry. Whatever. Well, he he yeah, took. They did, they it, from oh, I'm sorry. Calvin Pryor. Yeah. Okay, that's who he right. drafted. Devin the Smith. great <laughs> Devin Smith. The right. great. Devin Smith. Yes. Devin Smith was great. Oh yeah. That, oh, every single player yeah. that he drafted was the only person that he drafted that was decent was Quincy Anumwa. Okay. Yeah. Everybody else, garbage. Absolute garbage. And you go up and down McCagnin. Right. He brought Sam Darnold in, absolutely. But who wouldn't have drafted Sam Darnold? Me and you right. would have drafted right. Sam Darnold if you were sitting there at three. Here's, here's the thing, too, and I'm glad you brought up Sam Darnold because this is the other thing that, that, that I want to point out. Okay? Sam Darnold, going into his third year, he should not be judged on his first two years. Yes, you want to say... Oh well, he had the ankle injury in his in, in his uh, in his rookie season, and then he started coming back on. Okay, and then last year he gets mono, maybe his fault, maybe not his fault, and then he comes back and he's 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 getting there, and then really starts to starts to finish strong as they start heading down the stretch. There's not enough of Sam Donald to to portray whether or not he's a bust or he's not, and also he's played behind. The NFL ranked oh, 31st geez. and 32nd offensive, offensive lines, lines in the NFL, mm-hmm. which is second worst and worst in the NFL. Mm-hmm. There's nobody who could who could be productive behind that. But Sam Donald found a way to be productive because last year's numbers were better than the year before. Mm-hmm. Yep. So why is everybody all of a sudden getting this wild hair that, oh, well, the Jets should finish 1-15 so we could go after Trevor Lawrence? <laughs> what are you watching? What are you basing this on? Yeah. Okay, it's not as if that the New York Jets have the sixth ranked or seventh ranked offensive line mm-hmm. in the league, and we're turning it over to a kid who doesn't know how to use it. Mm-hmm. This kid is basically running for his life on every freaking play. <laughs> so oh, we're ready to go to the curb. Then what, was, then what was Mark Sanchez's excuse? Mark <laughs> Sanchez, when he walked into this league, had the number one rushing attack. And also the number the number one ranked offensive line in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Come on, guys. Yep. I mean, seriously, what are, you, what are you basing Sam Darnold being a bust on? I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why people say Sam Darnold's a bust. We don't know what he is yet, but Sam Darnold now has an offensive line that was reconstructed this offseason. If there is a season, you have a bunch of the oldest player on that offensive line is twenty eight years old. So you, you just got rid of Brian Winters the other day. So no more Brian Winters. You saved seven point eight million dollars. I told Eric Coleman that was. I told Eric that was going to happen. I said that they were going to drop Brian Winters as soon as they reconstructed that that offensive line. They needed, they wanted to save eight or nine million dollars because they're going to take that money and they're going to throw it into a Marcus May. They're going to throw it into one of their free agent players in the offseason next year. But not not even that. What bothers me about Jamal Adams, and I I know you're going to say, well, I'm wrong about this and I'm wrong about it. this. Is my opinion. Jamal Adams has been an absolute joke since he's come to this team. He speaks. I met Jamal Adams twice. At events twice, nice guy took pictures with him. The problem with him, it's all always me, 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 me. It was never team, 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 team. You're talking about a leadership. You you want to talk about a leader? You if you're a leader of a team, you're a leader of a defense. Have you ever heard C.J. Mosley when he was running the he was the the lead guy for the Baltimore Ravens calling the plays at the line of scrimmage? Have you ever heard C.J. Mosley say this is all about me? It's all about this. It's all about that. He never said no. that. Never said that. Even when he had that unbelievable first game as a New York Jet and was out for the whole season last year. Out for the whole season. Came back and he was out. 
They, and all the Jet fans, you could be mad at Jamal. You could be mad at uh, C.J. Mosley for taking a step back and opting out of this this year. And I understand it. He doesn't want to get his family sick. No, He's I got a lot of kids. Him. You don't blame him. So you can't take a shot yeah, at him because he's trying him. to protect him and his family. But again, right. there might not be a season. Right. This year is going to be a wash. I think people are talking about whether they should go after Clowney. I don't think they should do any of that. Give. Douglas another draft, give him another off season, and I think one advantage that he's going to have CJ is that there are going to be some people sleeping on these college prospects because you don't know what kind of a college season you're going to have, and I think that's perfectly right, geared exactly. for Douglas because he is a guy that just sits in his basement and watches film. So if and here's the thing about Darno, you go back his last 17 starts. He has thrown for just under 4,000 yards, 3,995 yards, 25 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, and a 62.3 pass, you know, uh, a pass completion right percentage yeah. to, uh, a, with an offensive line where he looks like he doesn't know what blocking assignment is going to pick up their blocking assignment. Each time he dropped, he back was to pass. he was hit three th- th- third most in the NFL yeah. last year, third so, most, and he didn't even play. Yeah, he yeah. he missed five games. And, he missed five games. And and I think people that are asking, oh, should they go after Clowney? Ever since he was at South Carolina, Clowney chooses to take off specific plays. He's not consistent. South Carolina never won the East when he was there, despite having uh, also on Jeffrey uh, and uh, and a running back that was very good before he got hurt. Marcus Lattimore. I, yeah, yeah. My, Marcus Lattimore. So I, I I, would stay away from him. And Gonkway is a guy that I would go after in the offseason next year so I don't have to take the salary cap this year. And, and they don't have to building, trade away any of their draft picks. Right, and keep building right. with the draft. If you give this guy another draft with uh, with a, a pick this year, pick next year, you don't know who he's going to He's got two first round. He's got two first round draft round picks. Pick. He's got yeah. two first round draft picks coming up in 2021. So, he has possibly a, a conditional pick. He might have two second rounds, two third rounds, a fourth, right. uh, two fifths. Two sixth and, and still, two sevenths. They still need this depth. coming year. They still need depth. That's the biggest thing you have in the NFL that consistent winners have is depth. So when guys get hurt, right. they fill in the other guys. The Patriots do it. The Steelers do it. Now the Chiefs do it. Look at all the good teams that have been consistent over the last ten years. They draft well in the second, third, and fourth rounds. And if one guy goes out, there's another guy that steps up, and you don't even notice the difference. Uh, here's another thing. You, you know what's funny is they release the top 100 players. In the NFL, of course, there's no Jets on it now. But do you know who is on it? Demario Davis, a guy that was, uh, what, second, third round pick and was kind of an afterthought, kind of like a James Farrier. These guys who leave the Jets and then become superstars, that's going to end now. And uh, I think you have Douglas to thank for it. Well, Douglas is not, and CJ, you know this very, very well, just as much as I know it and any Jet fan knows it. Joe Douglas is not going to overpay a player. He comes from the Baltimore Ravens. No, he's not. He comes for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's not going to overpay. You saw what he did with the offensive lineman. He brought in McGovern. McGovern got $33 million, $26 million guaranteed. And this is one of the best centers in the league. One of the top six, seven centers in all of football. And a versatile yep. guy that could also play guard. And yes, and you brought in, yep. you brought in George, Font, George Font, who was the best offensive lineman for the yeah. Seattle Seahawks yeah. last year. And now, what are they going to have to protect Russell Wilson? Everybody keeps talking about Seattle. Look how good they are. I yelled at Mikey C, and I went back and forth at Mikey C on the phone a couple of days ago. He telling me, he's telling me Jamal Adams is going to secure them as a big-time playoff team. Where? Where is he going to secure them? They have no pass rusher. They have two very good linebackers. Their front seven is not good like it was when their Super Bowl years. Their Legion of Boom is the Legion of Goom now. So you know, they're, they're, they're garbage. I'm telling you right now. They're not making the playoffs. Not in that division. No way in hell they're making the playoffs in that division. With a San Francisco team that absolutely got better in the draft. You talk about... Uh, the Tampa Bay uh, uh, Tampa, Buccaneers, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who added Tom Brady and 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 uh, Gronkowski, which is they're going to have more of an explosive team. They're going to give a lot of problems offensively and defensively to other teams. They had one of the best defenses in the league last year too under Todd Bowles. Mm-hmm. So you you look at their you look at the teams in that division. Where are they going to have an easy game? 
And in their division, too. Arizona got a lot better, yeah, Arizona, too. I forgot about that. DeAndre Hopkins. I mean. Great they, draft. <laughs> they had a great draft. I mean, where are they going? Where do they think that they're just going to squeak right in and make a playoff run with Jamal Adams? Is Jamal Adams that good? He's going to take that whole defense to a Super Bowl? He couldn't do that with the Jets. He couldn't take them to a winning season. Right. Exactly. So, And how many games, how many playoff games has Jamal Adams won for us? None. Zero. Zero. How many plays? How many games okay. have we gone to the playoffs with them? Zero. I mean, seriously, this is this hey. is a guy that is overrated. Hey, CJ, I would take Dowell Ray. I would take Eric McMillan. Those guys, I would take in a second over Jamal Adams. And I'm not saying Jamal Adams is a bad player. And anybody that thinks that I'm sitting here and saying that, I was never a Jamal Adams fan. Okay, Mikey C took shots at him. I stuck up for Jamal Adams. He said my, Jamal Adams is not one of the top three safeties in the league. I think that's a, a absolute crock. Right. He is because there's not many good safeties in the league. So if you if you want to compare him to the corners, he's not even close. But I, I look at Jamal Adams. He's an experienced player. He's been in the league for three years. He thinks he can go to a Super Bowl contender if he thinks they're a Super Bowl. The Jets have a better chance right now in the division that they're in to make the playoffs than Seattle does. That's the crazy thing. They have a yep. better chance to make the playoffs than Seattle does. And Seattle, we've seen them all the years bringing stars, and sometimes they don't even work there in terms of helping out their team. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't make an effect. Seattle wins weird. Seattle wins at home. They'll, they'll be competitive, but you're right. I don't think it makes a drastic difference. Win at difference. home? There's no crowd. Uh -huh, There's yeah, no fans. Sure. There's no 12th man. Now, where, where are they, where are they going to have an advantage this uh, yeah, season? I know. And, I, and look at, we were talking about Arizona. Arizona win, wins in Seattle, I think, three of the last four yeah, years, too. Yeah. So and you know what you do? Yeah, you know what you do, CJ? Here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. We'll give him $90 million for him to two, three years opt out of his contract <laughs> yeah. and go somewhere else. Go to the Browns, go to the mm -hmm. Cowboys, and lose with them, too. Mm -hmm. He's never going to win. He's not a winning player. <laughs> He's yeah. never going to win. Especially if he goes to the Browns. He, he, He's never going to win. You know what else? He's is, a money player. You know what else Odell is, Beckham. This kind of happened that quietly hasn't gotten any attention is how many players on the Patriots have decided to opt out. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that this season. So I'm not even sure what kind of season it's going to be. So I, I don't think you, you don't push your chips in to the table on this year. Wait it out, and then next year you have that much more to build from. Well, there you go. So you're like shake off the fluke year kind of thing. CJ, what do you have to say before we let you go, my friend? You know what? I actually kind of like the way Mark is is viewing it. I mean, if I if if I'm Joe Douglas and Adam Gase, I mean, granted, you know, this year there's there's memorandums put out where they think that Adam Gase may not be the head coach at the end of this year. Probably, not. and you know what? I, I think that there's a possibility that should if this team underperforms, regardless of who's out there, while Adam Gase is pulling is pulling the trigger. I really think that it doesn't matter that Adam Gase helped Joe Douglas get right. the GM job. Right. I think that Joe, I, I think that Joe Douglas, the whole reason why Joe Douglas got this contract was because of the fact that he negotiated that probably he maybe has a little bit of secretive power. Oh, you know where look, if the, if it push comes to shove, if it between Joe Douglas and Adam Gase, who yep. are you getting rid of? Yep. You're getting Adam rid of Gase, Gase oh. before you get rid of Douglas. Ah, Douglas hands brings on. three Super Bowl <laughs> rings to the, to the table. <laughs> yeah. What does Gase bring? Gase brings nothing. He brings Peyton Manning's jockstrap to the oh, table. Oh, he could bring wipes. <laughs> he, 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 he could bring wipes right. to wipe his ass. <laughs> I mean, that's about it. I mean, he brings right. a psychotic look that looks like he's going to murder you when he walks. <laughs> <laughs> the That's what he brings. I, I listen. So, I, 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 we again. I'm going to stick up for Adam Gase. If you look at the teams he's ever coached, he's never coached good teams, and he's never had a starting quarterback for a full season. Say whatever you want. If you think Tana, um, what, what is his, um, not Tannehill. Tannehill is a starting quarterback in this league. I don't know what you guys are watching. I don't want to hear about the Tennessee and what he did with Tennessee. Anybody could throw 72 yards and take a team all the way to, to an AFC title game if they have a running back like Derek um, Henry. Derek Henry. So. Uh, again, you can argue your points on whatever. T Tannehill was not a starting quarterback. He's not a starting quarterback in this league. And I look at the big picture right now. Let's see what Adam Gase has and see what Adam Gase does with a good team around him. Maybe he wins. Maybe he is a good coach if he has good players around him. Let's see that. I have not seen that. Until we see that, we can't argue the point that Adam Gase is not a good coach. I think it's a chicken and the egg thing. I mean, is, are they a bad team because he's the coach? Or does he coach a bad team? I don't know.
That, that only time will tell. And I think that this year, let's see what this team could do with a healthy Sam Donald with a good offensive line that's going to give him three, four seconds to throw the ball. If they could do that, they yep. don't have a lot of playmakers. That's for sure. Le'Veon Bell, Denzel. I think Denzel Mims is a beast. I think he's going to be a great player. They need another big-time splash guy that's going to go out there and catch the ball. They don't have that guy. Is he a Stephen Hill? What no, think, CJ? No, 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 he was no, a lot no, better of a prospect. No, 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 no. And no, a great second-round no. pick. Denzel I'm Mims. throw a name out there really quick before, before I go here. Go don't sleep on Lawrence Cager. Lawrence Cager will, will – will, uh, end up making this roster, and he's going to have some sort of an impact this season. Mark my words. Mm-hmm. I, I, I will say this. Denzel Mims could, could turn out to be the best wide receiver in that draft with arguably the best wide receiving draft we've seen in probably 25 years. So, And I, I do believe, and ask anybody, if you watch this show, anybody will tell you it was, it was either Jerry Judy that I wanted or Denzel Mims. Those were the two guys that I wanted. And the fact that he moved, he moved up, he moved down, to get Denzel Mims. He still got the player that he mm-hmm. won and got and, draft and, picks and back. Still got him. Yep. And he traded it and he traded those picks. He traded that pick uh, that, that pick that he got from Seattle yeah. to the Patriots for two fourth rounds yeah. and a sixth round next year. I remember so, saying that when in the, at that time Mims you probably have to trade up to, back into the first round to get him and the, the Jets did the opposite and they got extra picks for it. So you, you know yep, they did. Joe Douglas did the right thing. I, I think Joe Douglas is the right guy for the position. Let's just see moving forward where he's going. You know where he's going to go with this team. I think Joe Douglas was the right pick, and I said it best three years, two years ago when they brought in C.J. Mosley and Le'Veon Bell. Two, three, four years down the road, people are going to say, "Well, who was the big guy that they brought in into that in that off season?" And everybody, and I've told everybody, the big guy that they brought in was Joe Douglas. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Not C.J. Mosley, not Le'Veon Bell, because both guys won't be there when they win a title. It will be Joe Douglas. I guarantee oh. it. Thanks, yep. thanks, C.J. Take care, C.J. All righty, guys. Have a good night. C.J. Desimone from Weapons Hot. Great show, by the way. Love his show. Love his personality. And I love his, uh, his animosity. To yeah. his, uh, <laughs> you true. know, He's got some good animosity to his team and to some teams in the NFL. And so. by the way, uh, speaking of Weapons Hot, they will be actually on tonight because they couldn't do their show yesterday because they had a power outage. Oh, good. So Ooh. they will be on right after Wise Guys tonight. Oh, that's great. Nice. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I love this show. So looking forward to that. Anyways, we're not going to a break. Let's get into the whole Tom Thibodeau thing. Now, everybody knows what I thought about it. I, I've been saying it since November of 2019. I wrote an article about it, that Tom Thibodeau will be the next New York Nick head coach. There was reasons why I had it. You know, I had him being the coach. First of all, he was the best coach available. And I don't care. You can say Kenny Atkinson. Me and Mikey fought about that. He said Kenny Atkinson was the best coach available. Kenny Atkinson was a head coach for two Years. Two years. Did he, t- did he help the Nets go where they needed to go? Absolutely did. Now, Kenny Atkinson was fired after two years. This is the same Kenny Atkinson that everybody respected, everybody loved, and, and, and everybody was talking about being coach of the year with Sean Marks uh, as the executive of the year. But again, we can go back and forth and argue our points about where this team were, where the Nets were going. They weren't going anywhere because they didn't have that superstar. They brought in Kyrie Irving. They brought in Kevin Durant. And Kyrie Irving absolutely pushed Kenny Atkinson away. I believe it was Kyrie Irving. The reason why the reason why Kenny Atkinson don't have his job anymore. Outside of Brad Stevens, there's not not been another franchise where he hasn't pushed out the coach. And Jason yet. Kidd. Let me tell you something. As much as I like Jason Kidd as a player, Jason Kidd is not a head coach in the nope. NBA. He's just not. I did not want Jason Kidd. And I know Eric, Eric wanted Jason Kidd. We and him argued on uh, the weekend crunch. I did not want Jason Kidd. The guy that was available, the only guy. And everybody keeps saying Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson said it best on um, the um, uh, Stephen A. Smith show. Uh, what's that show called? First Take. Uh, first Take. I don't even watch the show because I can't stand it. <laughs> him and Max Kellerman. He said it best. He said, the Knicks made the right choice. Now, I would have loved to coach the Knicks. That's my dream job. It's a lot of people's dream job to coach the New York Knicks because a lot of people believe they can fix the New York Knicks. It's going to take years 
to fix this organization and this team. Did they did they get it right with Tom Thibodeau? They absolutely did. Anybody that thinks that they didn't get it right, well, obviously don't know basketball. Right, and look at the coaches they've had before that, too. These were all puppets or scrap heap coaches or assistants they hired from within. Kurt Rambis, Derek Fisher, anyone like that. They were scrap heap coaches. They hadn't had a coach with this big of a reputation in a long time either, and that's a big thing when it comes to this free agent era in terms of attracting them. Well, I, I know Jeff is about to call the show, and I, I'm sure he's got his own opinion about the New York Jets and their organization. So why don't we put Jeff on the phone? Speedy, do you have him on? Jeff, what's going on, my friend? How are you? I haven't heard from you in a long time, buddy. It's been a little while. I How- can't believe you think anyone could fix the New York Knicks. First of all, I, I, I think that if there's anybody that can fix the New York Knicks, it will be Tom Thibodeau. Now, I, I don't know when you look at the team at, at right now on paper, do I think they can win with this team? No, I don't. Do I think they have pieces you can build around? I think Mitchell Robinson could be a piece. I think R.J. Barrett could be a piece. I think Frank Nelikino looked like he got better this year. He looks like a good young player. He could play defense, and he's working on his offensive style of game, and he can pass the ball very, very well. I think they have pieces. They're, are they a championship competitive team? Dude, they're not going to be a championship competitive team for at least another two years. That At least through two, three years. They're going to have to rebuild through – uh, the draft, they have a lot of draft picks. They got, in the next five years, they have seven first round draft picks. And they have a lot of free agency money where they can spend it in all different ways. So, Jeff, I want to know your opinion to that. Right, but, right, but listen, we, we've talked about this before. I like Kevin Knox. I think Kevin Knox is a you nice do. piece. You RJ, RJ Barrett's a nice piece. Uh, the big kid Robinson, mm-hmm. uh, Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson. I think I think he's a really nice piece, but it just comes down to this for me, right? And I don't, you know, if you like Thibodeau, fine. You like Thibodeau, and it it's James Dolan. Well, I know what I'm you're going to say. Like, you're going to say James Dolan. He, he, it, James, dude, listen. The Knicks aren't going anywhere until they fix getting rid of James Dolan. Period. Hard stop. You're talking about free agency dollars. When was the last time the Knicks proved they could reel in a big free agent? Go ahead. I'll wait. And you're absolutely right. Amari Stoudemire, and Amari Stoudemire was good for one year. You're absolutely right. We don't know if they could bring in a big time free agent. But here's the thing: they brought on they brought in Leon Rose, who is. This is a guy that's an agent. He has a, a good relationship with the league, good relationship with a lot of players in the league, that he's actually been their agent. I believe that Leon Rose could bring in free agents. Now, the question is, knowing this, is Leon Rose in charge or is James Dolan in charge? If James Dolan is in charge, Leon Rose is going to get nobody. John Davidson took over the team for the New York Rangers, and you see this is John Davidson's team. You see it. And the Rangers have been a good organization, a good team for the last 15 years. They they haven't won any championships, but they've been a good team. They've been a good organization. And that is also, they're also owned by James Dolan. The question is right now, when you look at Tom Thibodeau and you look at the New York Knicks right now as a whole, could they wheel in or reel in a good free agent to play with R.J. Barrett? You're right. I don't know if they can, but I think if ta- if there's anybody that can do it in, in the way he coaches and the way he demands respect defensively, it's Tom Thibodeau and Leon Rose. I don't know nothing about Leon Rose, but I do know go look at all the top free go look at all the top basketball players in the NBA and tell me who he hasn't been the agent for. Go tell me because he has made them millions upon millions of dollars. Right, but now he's on the other side of it, though, right? Like, he knows and the players know, you know, no one's taking a GM job so they can still take care of players. There's still a salary cap that you have to be under and and things like that. So it's not like he's just, you know, going to just be doing players' favors by giving them whatever they want. It's not happening. No, and I I agree with you. And the Knicks are not a hot spot, uh, not a hot place to go anymore. You think of Madison Square Garden. Now people want to go over there and bust the Knicks up in Madison Square Garden. So we know that it's not a hot place. I feel as though, and and I feel as though the more James Dolan has become a pariah, you know, the Oakley thing, kicking fans out that scream, sell the team or, you know, whatever. The more he's become a pariah, the more he's tried to insert himself as like the authoritarian in that organization. And I feel as though he's trying to prove that he can do it. And that's a bad recipe for success. 
as, as you guys know, this is Jeff from Tampa, and uh, I'm sorry to all the fans that this show wasn't two hours. We had some technical difficulties, but uh, everything is up. So we have about 15 minutes left of the show. Uh, but, uh, Jeff, before we let you go, and uh, I want to get off the New York Knicks because we got uh, baseball to get into. Um, what do you think of the New York Yankees right now? Aaron Judge? Five-game hitting streak, uh, six-game hitting streak for home runs. This guy is on a tear right now. I don't know if baseball is going to be around for the next uh, two or three weeks if if this COVID-19 starts to spread even worse than it has with the St. Louis uh, Cardinals and the uh, Miami uh, Miami Marlins. So uh, what do you think about the Yankees and the way they're playing right now? And Aaron Judge has been on a tear. So is Dark Carlos Stanton, by the way. Yeah, I, no, listen, the Yankees can hit. That's you know That's not their problem. They can hit. But, you know, like anything else, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't really think the Yankees have faced any quality pitchers. Listen, listen, the Red Sox pitching staff is just a bunch of AAA guys. I would seriously hope they can hit AAA guys, right? The, the Red Sox pitching staff think they haven't faced really a bunch of top-line guys yet, which they would in the playoffs against the They did. Nationals. The Nationals. Nationals. The, they did it with the Nationals. And the, the thing that worries me for the Yankees is their pitching. I'm not. I, 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 he was three yeah. innings last night. I'm more worried about the Yankees' uh, timely hitting in the later innings. That's what worries me about the. I don't think the pitching is going to be a problem. Garrett Cole's an ace. You could you could pitch him two games in a series of seven. Uh, you you have James Paxton, who I think takes a little while to figure things out. Remember, he was out for uh, a lot of the season last year because of injury. I think James Paxton, and by the way, Masahiro Tanaka is a great playoff pitcher. We've seen it year in and year out. So I don't think it's going to be the starting pitching that's going to worry me. I think it's their it's their timely hitting. This has been a problem for the Yankees in the playoffs. They timely. And when it comes to timely hitting, the Yankees cannot hit in the clutch. They've had this problem for the last six years in the playoffs. And that's a huge problem for the Yankees moving forward. Jeff, the other thing you got to look at, too. I... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I mean, I, I, I do give the Yankees a lot of credit, right? Because, you know, certainly they look like one of the best teams in the AL East. And that's very surprising to me, considering they're probably doing it this year without any cheating. Mm-hmm. Jeff, the other so thing. excelling right now, so excelling right now is is a major bonus for them, right? Well, I, I think right now with the Yankees, the Yankees are just trying to win games and get into that uh, sixteen game playoff uh, team round robin, and mm-hmm. and do you know, and 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 I'll play all the bad teams, and and, w- and what I don't understand with Rob Manfred, by the way, the worst. I, I can I I wouldn't be, I couldn't believe to say this. I wouldn't oh. ever say this. Rob Manford is the worst commissioner in professional sports, even wow. worse than Roger Goodell. This guy is a complete, utter moron, okay? This guy is a moron. Who tells me, how could you tell me that you put 16 teams in a playoff and, and the two number one teams could pick the teams they want to play against? Are you kidding me? What kind of sense is that? Are you kidding me? Come on, Jeff. How stupid could you be? Yeah. If you're a sports fan. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. It's not great. <laughs> he's an idiot. I, mean, I don't, you know. Jackass. No, he, he definitely is. He 100% is. But the Yankees aren't even the team that really even intrigues me all that much, you know, in New York. For me, it's the Mets. Oh, for all the, the wrong reasons. So well, you know, I always used to say the season never started for the Mets until someone got hurt. But now they're just up and quitting on the Mets. Mm. By the way, speaking of the New York Mets, and uh, I know a lot of Mets fans are uh, having heart attacks right now because their bullpen has been absolutely horrendous where they reconstructed their bullpen, adding Dellen Patances. By the way, I told all you Mets fans that I just didn't think that Dellen Patances would fit with the New York. I think they overpaid Dellen Patances, $13 million. I, I think Dellen is on his wit's end as a big-time eighth-inning guy. I think he's one of the best – uh, eighth inning guys we've seen in the last seven or eight years. He's a border. He will if if he continues doing this on the Mets. He's a borderline Hall of Famer. Go look at his numbers. His numbers will show you that he's a borderline Hall of Famer. I thought with the baseball writers, pitcher. he's not going to get in. Though. No, absolutely. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. The younger the baseball writers, yeah. maybe uh, there's an opportunity in the future. But 
Dellen Patances has been one of the best bullpen uh, arms in baseball for the last eight years. He's but, definitely the best non-closer, for sure. But to me, when you look at the New York, Met, uh, the New York Mets right now, not only this, how about Ioannis Cespedes opting out of the season? Ioannis Cespedes, Mr. Moneybags that's trying to expect a big contract after the season. How could you walk out of this team and this organization when this organization's been waiting for you to step up and do the things that they expected you to do after they gave you a hundred and some odd million dollars and you were the highest paid right-handed power hitter in baseball. What kind of disrespect could you give the New York Mets and that fan base and that organization when you have your own freaking damn Mets song when you come up to the plate, you dumbass? A complete retard, okay? And I, I don't use that word on national radio. He is a retard, okay? I can't stand you on Cespedes, and I hope no team signs him after this year. The guy's a joke. I heard he quit the Mets because he found out Beav was a fan. No, maybe that too. Maybe that too, but, and I don't like using those derogatory words because I, I keep it straight and I keep it 100 to fans. And I know a lot of people think, I say the truth. And to me, Joanna Cespedes is a joke. Brody Van Wagenen is a joke. Oh, boy. He is an absolute joke. Oh, he sits back well, and he know, says whatever he wants. If you want to like bring, bring it full circle on the conversation you were kind of having on the next, well, there's an example of a uh, of a, an agent running a team that it's not working out for. He did a lot of things for for guys, and so this is what you know. I mean, I'm sure he's done a lot of things for guys, but it's yeah. not the things that we're yeah, thinking not about. Any, not any be other things. things. On sports. Uh, why don't we ask the coupons? That's why he probably got the GM job. Maybe he got on his hands and knees and did something. Who knows what Brody Van Wagenen did? Because the fact that he got that job is a complete utter mess for the New York Mets, it's so and typical. they're and they're going to have to try to figure something out when they bring in Cohen. Because if Cohen comes in and he takes over, and we don't know what's going on with that, we heard so many things about oh this this organ this uh, this group of people we're going to buy the team, this group of people, that group of people. And the Cohen, Cohen or, uh, group of people. We've heard so many things about the New York Mets, and nothing has happened. Nothing, nothing. So what are, we, what are we waiting for here? What is the Mets fans waiting for? Here's what the Mets fans are waiting for. They're waiting for this team to completely bomb. So Jody, I call him Jody brand, bandwagon in because he is a little girl. The guy, Jody, sits there and he says whatever he wants. He's on national radio all the time on WFAN making excuses after excuses after excuses with Joe Beningo and Evan Roberts. Here's my excuse. When you sit back and you keep talking about J.D. Davis and the panda or whoever you want to talk about or the polar bear, whatever you want to call them, okay, this team has done nothing so far in almost eight games. Eight games. What are you going to do when this team next year is expecting an 162-game season to win ball games with the same coupons running the organization? What are they going to do? Answer that question, Jeff. What are they going to do? The Red Sox have a right. The Red Sox have a right. They brought in the right guy. The, the guy that the Red Sox brought in, brought in was the same guy that the Mets should have brought in when they interviewed him. Well, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Who really knows if that's going to work out or not? I'm, you know, as a Red Sox fan, I am a little fearful that we're just going to become, you know, a higher budget version of the Rays, which is, I mean, really what this team is looking like right now, which right. disgusts me. But the Rays um, need to the, the, I, that, you know, that kind of philosophy, though, you need to reverse it with all the bad contracts they have right now, though. And, and, and I know people are saying things on here. I thought you liked Brody. I never said I liked Brody. I never no, said I liked Brody. I, don't think so. I never said I liked Brody Van Wagenen. I don't know where any. I, uh, Josh, I never said I liked Brody Van Wagenen. I never did. I think the Mets should like just move out of New York, like, you know, just move to Nashville or something and be like. You know, get out of the, the, the spotlight of New York. It, it's doing nothing for them right now.